Yep, it shows all four of us. Okay, maybe you got to hit go live on your end now, which is new. Okay, let's see what happened. It should be working. Oh, something's happening there. Here it goes. It's spooling. All right. We're, we're live. I see you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's not working on my end, but. <laughs> it's still working. Oh, no, this one is just fooling. Anyways, hello, everybody. Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Um, today we are joined by, and I don't know what areas they're in because I can't tell, but we got so Becca, we got yes. Ian, the off kilter crafter, and then Teresa Louise, I quilt too. All joining with me today and i don't know why none of my stuff is working but it's working on the screen so i guess that's good <laughs> <laughs> anyways so happy easter everybody the day before easter and we're here to bring you some entertainment do you guys want to talk about yourselves uh we'll start with you becca oh no start with somebody else please <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Ian, you start. Uh, I can't hear you, Ian. You're muted. It, we changed rooms, and so my microphone turned off. Anyways, <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Ian the Off-Kilter. After I come off mute, hey, everybody, it's Ian the Off-Kilter Crafter. Now you see why I'm the Off-Kilter Crafter. Anyways, I'm located here in Texas. I hope everybody's having a great day today, and I'm so excited to be sewing I like our project today, or our, our challenge today. So I'm super excited to uh, get going with that. But uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to move over to Miss Teresa? Yes, Teresa, your turn. OK, hello, everyone. I'm Teresa Louise. I quilt, too. And thanks so much for having me here today, Tiffany. And I'm happy to see Becca and Ian, too. And I am looking really forward to to this challenge also, because I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and do something a little more modern. Mm, looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. So that's all I got. <laughs> Which leaves me, and then we'll go back over to Miss Therese or Miss Tiffany. And I apologize because I am the one trying to get all the tech working. And I think I was the reason we had problems getting things started. So, um, hi, I'm Becca. I have a channel called So Becca, and I'm really excited about today's line work challenge because I don't normally work with Tula. And this is the start of probably embracing more Tula pink items in the future. I have chosen lots of bright solids, which are outside of my normal realm, and lots of uh, Tula for the line work. So really excited about that. I can't wait to show you guys what I'm going to be doing today. Mm -hmm. Same, 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 same. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys didn't see, oh, I got to see how I did this button right here. Hold on. I'm going to do, 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 do. I think it's this one. spotlighted for everyone right now. Yeah, well, I'm doing this. You're turning oh. your camera off? No, I'm not doing that. Oh, it's not going to work. <laughs> we are using line work by Tulip Pink. So that way you guys can see this is what we are using and working with. It is an array of black, white with a hint of color thrown in through the whole entire thing. But Tiffany, we don't we don't see you. Your camera's off. Yeah. It's, I don't I didn't turn it off. It just says there you are. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay, you well, it's it's a layer cake with hints of color throughout it. If you guys don't know Tula, I have not cut into mine yet. I was I had a last minute decision making change on what I was gonna make because <laughs> I'm working on a slower machine. So I changed my mind for <laughs> how quick I want to work. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. No, we couldn't see you. It looks like maybe you were trying to change camera or something. I don't know what happened, but it popped up with just your name. What? How do we want to run this? Like, let's get excited. Let's get the energy up. Let's do lots of fun things. Like, 
Well, I've kind of already what started. Is, what is everybody using with their Tula layer cake? Who wants to go first? I'll go I'll first. I'll go first because I'm right here. Okay. okay Tula layer cake is matching up with the uh, Geo Tula fabric. Two different colors. Why are their cameras? Okay. That's what I'm doing. And do you, um, do you have a pattern or are you going to share what kind of pattern you're doing or? I am kind of like making things up as I go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this should be interesting then. <laughs> Improv quilt. <laughs> yeah. She comes up with some pretty good stuff. She does. She runs rings around us <laughs> every I time she sews anything together. <laughs> Maybe if she's got to st spend time thinking about what she's going to do, it'll slow her down enough for us to actually make a block. Maybe. Oh, that would be <laughs> maybe. <good. laughs> Ian, what, you what does your shirt you? say? Uh, I'm reading it backwards. Uh, love, empathy, compassion, inclusion, justice, kindness. That's nice. All the good things. All the good things. Um, I am going to be working on, I also have already cut, I've done pre-cuts of my layer cake. And then I have this pack that I actually got from Becca of Kona solids in rainbow. And I'm going to be combining those today in a pattern that is, uh, did you link it down below, Tiffany? Uh, no, I oh, forgot all about that. That's all right. No that. big deal. I am going to be working on the spring picnic quilt block. Um, this is from it's only fabric and thread .com. Um, It's on her blog and it's going to be the pattern that I'm going to be using today. Well, what about you, Teresa? What are you using? Um, I'm using the uh, Lineworks layer cake. Of course. <laughs> what are you using with it? I'm just a smarty. You smart. are. I am. Okay. And um, I am also using the geode fabric but this oh. is the color I'm using. Purple or pink? It's, um, you know. That one's like a purplish pink. Pur purplish pink, yep. Yeah. It's Look got purple that. and pink in it, yeah. So I'm using that. And then I'm also using a very light gray because normally I don't do gray, but this one kind of calls for some gray, I guess. <laughs> and, okay. And the pattern I'm going to do is out of the fat, um, fat quarter style book. Okay, and this is from It's So Emma from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I'm going to do the quilt called Flutter. Ooh, okay. And, and well, there it is. Um, now, I know this calls for fat quarters. So I had to make some adjustments because I'm using a layer cake. So it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's, you know, close enough. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. And I've already got mine cut. Well, looky Look there. That. Aren't you just all sorts of over of the game? <laughs> I'm ready. I got a bunch cut. Well, as you can see, I do not have mine all cut, but I'm hoping that by the time we get through all the jibber jabber, I will have it all cut. Most of it starched. I still have to starch my background. With my layer cake, I am going to be using some Tula salads. And my goal here is I'm going to use this black fairy frost as the background. And I saw Beth from Goody Goods do this with um, the Lola Boutique line. I'm going to be putting together the kaleidoscope of stars and I'll spot my, spotlight myself so everybody can see this a little bit better. This is the pattern that I'm going to use. And the thing that I like about it is it's basically a sawtooth star, but you only have star legs on two sides of the square. And then you kind of put things up together topsy turvy. So my idea was, I already made a block. This is what my block will look like. I'm going to make a bunch of these. And then I'm going to put them together all different ways into the quilt to kind of give it that motion. I'm going to use the solid colors, the bright colors for the star legs, the black for the background, and the square right here 
that's going to be my layer cake. So that's what I'm working on today. I have starched all of my layer cake pieces and cut those down to what the pattern says. And now I am cutting my star legs and my background. And that's a free uh, block? No, no, no. This is a pattern you have to buy off of Etsy. Um, okay. I can put the link to it in the Etsy shop down in the chat. I'll do that in just a couple of minutes. I think it was like a 10 or a 12 dollar pattern. Uh, according to this, the large size is going to measure 60 inches by 60 inches. But it's really easy to kind of make it your own, right? Because it's one block and you're just going to kind of keep repeating it. And so I may find that I might want to do some additional blocks in this to grow it out a little bit more, or maybe grab one of those really pretty colorful prints to put in the border. The goal here is that I want to keep all of the bright colors isolated as much as I can. The big pops of color, I want to be, I want those to be in the star legs. Um, uh, so are you going to care about um, where your fabric, the line works is? Because some of it is directional. So does that matter to you? No, because if you no. look at the pattern, um, I'll show you in the overhead camera really quick. If you look at the pattern, the way the quilt is laid out, the stars are going in all different directions. Sometimes they are upside down. Sometimes they are backwards. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm just going to let that be the way it's going to be. This quilt isn't going to have a top or a bottom. It's going to be sometimes upside down, sometimes sideways. It's square, so I can kind right. of turn it however I want it to be. I, right. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Oh, good. I remember seeing that quilt that Beth did on that. It was really pretty. It was. It was. Mm -hmm. Ever since she saw that, or ever since I saw that, I've been wanting to do one. So this is my chance. Awesome. Ian, do you have a block done yet? Or? Almost. I because you actually were just talking about directional. I realized that when I sewed these together, I didn't get the direction correct. And they don't have to be. My fabric is directional because it's got the pattern in it. And it, honestly, I could do it without worrying about which way goes what. But I really would like for it to kind of line up a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and pull Jack out already. You know, not <laughs> five minutes into it, pull Jack <laughs> out and start working. But it's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's, it's, no, it's, it's fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. This pattern that I'm doing it is really easy to do if you have directional fabric. That's one of the reasons why I picked it. Plus, I've been wanting to do this pattern anyway with Tula fabric because I thought it would look really good. Um, so, and I'm going to be doing some sewing flips and then. Um, as I sew those from corner to corner, I'm going to do another stitch so I get to cut off a half square triangle. And then I'm hoping to use those either on the back or in the border. Yeah, I'm actually going to do the same thing, Teresa. I've got my bonus half square triangle units, and this is going to be just cut off some fairy frost, right? And then I'll have that big pop of really bright, bright, blah, 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 <laughs> bright color that I'll do something with. I, I think whatever I do, if I end up using these in the border on my quilt, I'm going to probably want to add an inner border to add some negative space. So you have a place for your eye to rest before we give it even more visual stimulation. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, whether it's going to be in the back or on the border or for another project, but I am doing a second line just like you are and saving the excess. Yeah. And I also thought if I don't have enough for the border or I don't want to put them on the back, maybe a couple of throw pillows, you know, oh, yeah. make a couple of pillows. So then you have those to match your quilt. I think that would be really cute. I think so too. Yeah, I'm going to resize so. my window a little bit because I just realized I'm not able to see any of the chat and that's no fun. Part of this <laughs> is being able to talk with people while we're sewing. So there we go. Yeah, I have my chat up on the, I've been watching chat go by on my TV. So I've been watching Ooh. everybody. My as sister, they chit chat away. My sister, Nicole, is actually in the room with me right now. She's here. She's up visiting for... Easter weekend. 
and she's sitting in mama's chair doing some crochet. So oh, I've got hello, a sister. sister in here with her. Bye, she's Nicole. waving to everybody. <laughs> Happy Hi, Nicole. Nicole. I like to be on camera, but she <laughs> likes to be in the room while I'm doing this stuff. So sure. Okay, I got my first block done. And I like uh -huh. it. So it looks like this. And it's fun because you can either have it up words like this, or we can flip it around and have it go like this. Either oh. way. But I'm going to be running, running and creating a whole bunch of these blocks. And I probably won't finish today. So I'll be finishing tomorrow on my life. Yeah, and maybe that's the other thing. I'm going to go ahead and give each of you co-host abilities so that you can all spotlight yourself when you want to show people what you're working on. Uh, there we go. All, all three of you have co-hosts now. Um, Woohoo! We've got the power! <laughs> well, Tiffany should at least have the power since it's her yeah. live stream, right? <laughs> right so, now I'm just trying to separate my fabrics into piles. I mean, it's fine. I think the, uh, the the other thing that we forgot to mention, the tech kind of threw us off and the introduction yeah. really didn't get made. So let me just oh, kind yeah. of <laughs> walk us back with what we're doing here because this is kind of exciting. Yeah. I hope that this is going to be the first of many type of live streams that you see like this, not just amongst the four of us, but I am challenging other content creators to buddy up and do the same thing with their channels and their content creator friends. What we're trying to do here is take on a challenge, just dream up a challenge. For us, it was line work, a line work layer cake. That was the challenge. We all have to make something with that fabric. It doesn't have to be the same project. We There are no other rules other than you have to incorporate the line work layer cake. And this all stems from a year ago when Tiffany and Ian went to QuiltCon in Phoenix, Tiffany bought a line work layer cake for herself and bought one for me. And we had been thinking forever, we're going to do a live stream with that layer cake. We're going to do something with that layer cake. And we just never did. And then Ian kind of came into the fold and got one. And then we brought Teresa in because she had it too. And so yep. that's how we ended up with the four of us. I feel like the four of us is a, not that we're a good fit and nobody else works into this. I just feel like the size four in a group on the screen with the way Zoom represents it just fits really well. There's enough airspace for all of us to talk. We can show off our projects and you can still see what we're all working on. The goal out of this is that we are starting our project. And at the end of this, we're going to finish it on our own channel and our own content on our own way. So Ian just mentioned that he's not going to finish it here, but he's going to continue working on it tomorrow on his live stream. Teresa's going to work on hers on her channel. I'm not going to work on mine on, on my channel, but I am going to show you how it's coming together in my weekly blogs. So we've all got our own format, our own type of content. We're gonna keep you updated on how these are going together. So if you want to see how Teresa's, Ian's, mine, or Tiffany's are going, you need to make sure that you're subscribed to all of our channels so you're catching those videos. Yep. Yep. Um, Pam is asking, is line work the name of the line? Yes, line work is the name of this Tula Pink line. Uh, we all ended up with it uh, in one way or another. And uh, yeah, it's called Line Work. It is one of her older collect, not older, but uh, it's been a couple collections back from her. Um, so yeah, most, that's the name of this one. black and white, but mm -hmm. with just spots of color in it. Yeah, when this came out, um, I ran, I didn't walk <laughs> to get some <laughs> because it, it's really pretty. It is very pretty. I, I worked a little bit with this one in a Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilt, which is really funny, too, because I the way that they cut, they use an Accu quilter to cut their pieces. And when I got my pieces for that quilt, um, the way that it was cut, they were kind of smaller pieces of the pattern. And one of them had skunks in the one of the patterns that we're going to be using today has skunks. And I got all skunk butts in all of my <laughs> packets 
<laughs> so my quilt has only skunk butts. I think there's like one or two skunk heads in it, but it was quite hilarious of, well, I got all skunk butts in mine, but that's okay. That's funny. <laughs> yep. So if there are moments where we're quiet, it's honestly because we're kind of busy working and figuring things out. Feel Ian, free to and Ian and Teresa, are you guys going live tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Normal times? Yep. yep. Okay. That was one of the questions. <laughs> yep. I'll be live one one o'clock central standard time. And I'll be live two o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Okay. And Tiffany, are you going live tomorrow? Yep. Five o'clock Arizona time or Pacific time at this moment. <laughs> I, I feel left out. Becca, are you going live tomorrow? No, no. I don't go live on Sundays. <laughs> Would you like to go live tomorrow, Becca? Heck no. <laughs> I'm all set. <laughs> I did my job this week and I'm done. <laughs> okay. And also, um, some of you out there in the chat land may remember, or maybe you may not, but I made some of my um, seam press rice bags with this line. Yep. And here's one of them. It's got the polka dots on the bottom and the um, pandas on the top. And uh, then this one is a little heavier. Well, what made yeah. us all decide to be quilters is one of the questions. We'll start with you, Teresa. Yeah, Teresa, we'll start with you. Well, uh, I was kind of stuck in bed, <laughs> not able to do anything. And I just started watching YouTube channels and started watching um, then quilting kind of just came up and I'm like, you know, I got interested in watching the quilting and I'm like, boy, I wonder if I could do that. And, you know, I've sewed since I was eight. So I figured I could do it, you know. So I started watching Jenny Doan and um, so I just started and I already had fabric because I used to make like aprons and stuff like that. And um, so I just got out of bed and started sewing quilts a little bit every day and that's kind of how I got into it Je you know Jenny Doan just pulled me in I'm like well, that looks easy and all I need is a charm pack you know so I started ordering like the pre-cuts and um but I I ordered them off of like eBay and places like that where I could get them real cheap you know and all, all I really knew at that time was Moda because Jenny always said she was using Moda, Moda this, Moda that, you know. <laughs> so I figured that was good fabric, you know. And uh, yeah, I got um, quite a few charm packs like for $4, $5, $3 off of eBay. But that was, you know, probably seven years ago or so. And I just fell in love with it. And I fell in love with the, that you can be creative and quilting, you know, and you can work with colors and. Nah, you and, can't be creative and quilt. That's not possible. <laughs> right? Yeah, so. All right, Ian, how about on. you? What was the question? <laughs> How did you get into quilting? Oh, right. That one. Um, I got into quilting because I had a quilt from my aunt. My aunt made me a quilt when I was in middle school that was Harry Potter themed. I loved it. I literally had it on my bed every single night and slept with it all the way through college. And in college, it literally started to disintegrate. I used it so much that it literally started to disintegrate. And so I said, hey, can you make me another one? And she was like, no, but we can make one together. And so we started, we made a ginormous, like 96 by 100 and something inch wide quilt. It's huge. Um, and I have gotten the bug ever since for quilting. Miss Becca? Um, 
Why did I start quilting? No, it wasn't. <laughs> Nicole sitting across the room going, it's something that you always, well, no, she's not wrong. Uh, Isn't it because you did too uh, many crafts? Huh? And you needed huh? one so, okay, what, what she's referring to, I've forgotten all about this. This is how well my sister knows me. When Nicole had her oldest 22 years ago, gosh, anyway, when Nicole wow. had her oldest, um, she and I went to Walmart. I forgot all about this. And we bought one of those hand sewing machines you know what i'm talking about right oh like it looks gosh. like a staple gun we yes. bought one of those and a kit and we were going to make a rag quilt i didn't know that that's what it was called at the time but that's what we were going to make and i could not get that thing to work and spoiler alert i saw the brothers try to use that thing so i know that an experienced quilter has a problem with that tool but anyway we bought that and i just kind of gave it up and i never really wanted to sew I wanted, I never really wanted to sew, at least I didn't for a long time. And I had a friend that was, um, she had started sewing and she wanted to show me how to sew. I did take the home at class. So like for 10 weeks, I learned how to make a pillow and I learned how to sew on lined paper. You had to follow the line. That was it. But I never really had any other experience. I love to craft though. So I went to her house one weekend and she showed me some basics. I made a little project um, and I walked away kind of smitten. I bought my own sewing machine that weekend and I just dove in. And it's funny because I said, I never wanted to sew. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to deal with the machine. It's too complicated. No, 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 no. Well, I found that I loved that. And then I, I use that to try to make dresses for my daughter. I was not good as a seamstress. Man, if your garment is off a quarter of an inch, you can't use that. But if you're off on a quilt a quarter of an inch, you can still use the quilt. You can still cover up with it. So I had started making um, bags and clothes and stuff like that. And my mom was the one that kind of got me interested into it. We had bought some panels and we made blankets one year for all of the grandkids. And she did, I didn't even know that it was free motion quilting that is what she was talking about. She was talking about quilting it, sewing on the blanket after it was assembled and drawing outlines around all of the Disney characters that were on the panel. I didn't even know that that was a thing. I did that. I left the feed dogs up. I didn't put a free, a different foot. Out. Like I, I did it. It doesn't look great, but I did it. And I really enjoyed that. And because of that, I started getting into quilting a little bit more and more. And what really drew me in was I had a very small table with my small sewing machine to work on. And it was, I mean, it was a small desk. So when it was time to sew, I had to put everything away and bring the sewing machine up to do my seam. And then when it was time to iron, I had to put the sewing machine down and then press. And then when it was time to cut, I had to put the iron in the the towels that I was using as an ironing mat away so that I could do my cutting. It was literally that tight. So I really appreciated that I was able to work on little bits of fabric when I was building out blocks instead of the big pieces of fabric that you were using to make clothing. That kind of just drew me in and I never really looked back at that point. Awesome. All right, my story is stuck in a wheelchair, needed something to do. And I just got some fabric and started sewing. I made myself a couple clothing items at first. I wasn't really into it. I was like messing, they fit, the clothes fit, but it, I was messing up all the time. And then uh, I saw a video quilting or a picture of a quilt you know, that was all quilted up and everything. I was like, oh, I can make that. So I went ahead and cut up a sheet and made a quilt out of one single sheet. Well, I used a sheet on the back too, the whole one, but the front, it was a striped sheet and I made a sheet into a quilt. And from then on, I was actually hooked. And it also, the first three years though, I was in my wheelchair but uh, I did all sorts of things and I even started the YouTube back then because I made a video on how to recover my wheelchair. And uh, 
yeah, I, I actually fell in love so much that it gave me like this joy and happiness and the distraction so much that it actually got me out of the wheelchair. And I've only had like three or four bouts in it since. So that's how I got into quilting. Quilting is therapy. Yes, it yeah. is for me. Yeah. Very much. Sure helped me get up out of bed, give me something to do, you know. And it kind of takes your mind away from the your aches and pains, you know. Yes. Definitely does that for sure. Yeah. Because we all have them. <laughs> yes. Good morning from Germany. Wow, hello, Germany. Hi, Germany. Mine was, um, I had a ATV accident, you know, on a four-wheeler that ruptured L4 or 5 Ouch. and caused a bunch of other problems. Cracked my pelvis, that kind of. So I was in bed for quite a while, but um, it, because of that accident, it flared up my fibromyalgia. And it just took me forever to get out of that flare up. It was terrible. <laughs> terrible. So, I'm glad I found, I'm glad we all found quilting, you know, or something we could do. to uh, get us motivated, you know? Yeah. It's interesting, you guys were talking about how quilting is therapy. And I haven't had to use quilting as a physical therapy, but I have found that quilting is a emotional and mental therapy for me. Absolutely. It really improves this medium this activity improves my quality of life and it really settles me a lot. And I didn't even realize that I leaned on it as a therapy until we were in transition from our old home to this one. And my husband actually picked up on it. That was a time of really high stress in my life. And I didn't realize that I was using quilting and sewing as a way to cope with that stress until I couldn't sew or I couldn't quilt. And the stress just got really bad for me. So, yeah, yeah. I think it can be a lot of things for a lot of people. And for me, it is, it is definitely a way to kind of keep my emotional, mental well-being nice and even so I don't go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can you all say what pattern you're doing one more time? I was just going to say Maybe that. type it into the chat because <laughs> sure. I forgot to put it in the description of the video. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> I'll put a link to mine. Let me just find it. <clears throat> I'm doing a pattern called Flutter. And it's from the Fat Quarter book from the Fat Quarter shop called Style. And because I'm losing a layer cake, I'm ha having to adjust the measurements for this. So, um, which is really no big deal. I'm, I'm kind of lo losing like three inches thereabouts, but that's okay. It'll still work out. So in the chat. So I'll, I'll type that in the chat. I just popped my pattern into the chat for everyone. Tiffany, you're muted.
craziest inspiration for a quilt would be, I don't know, just mis mismatching all the fabric and throwing it all in one quilt. That's the craziest. Just taking a pile of fabric going, hmm, I can make a quilt out of this. That's a crazy <laughs> inspiration. Tiffany, can you try unmuting and sewing and see if we can hear you? Because yep. Zoom has that software. It should be reducing the sound of your machine. Try talking while you're sewing. Okay. Do, do, do. I'm going to talk while I sew to see if it works. Yeah. It... Yeah, we don't hear your machine, so you don't have to mute oh. yourself. Okay. Well, I do mute it because Scott's also in here reading the chat out loud. Oh, okay. Well, then you I don't do want for him that reason. to interrupt everybody if someone's talking. <laughs> the, the, he's <laughs> he's whispering it to me. He's still keeping up with the chat though, and then I wait for my, you know, jump in to ask you guys. <laughs> he's uh whispering sweet nothings in your ear when we're not looking. Is that what he's doing? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Hey, if that's what makes the two of you happy. Technically, we don't have to tell you to get a room since you're kind of already in one that you own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, my link, I put the link to mine in the chat, but it's getting blocked because I'm not a moderator. Oh. oh, make him a moderator. Yeah, I figured that he was going to need to put links in. You have to give me a second because I need to. Yeah, no worries. I can send it to you if that's easier. Uh. I just, I kept posting it and I was like, why, why are my links not going? Oh, right. Cause I'm <laughs> not a moderator. That's why. When I'm done with this, I'm going to send it over to Beth from Goody Goods and she's going to quilt this for me. And I'm giving her total creative control on how this is going to be quilted. And she keeps teasing me with the idea of using very bright thread all over the quilt. That sounds fun. It also sounds very scary. <laughs> nah. Type something in the chat, Ian, because I don't even see your name in here. All right, hold on. Can Becca move the design wall? The I just posted. The oh, Judy, okay. Just Judy, I'm way. sorry. Judy's like, I was wondering too. I kept looking for your post. I was like, I, I kept, yeah, it's fine. It's all good. If I hang it back here, that might help. Give me a second. That's okay. That's fine. No <clears throat> big deal. Actually. There you go, Ian. Should be on. Find out. There it goes. Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> I thought he was already a moderator. He was. I don't know why he wasn't just now. Got him right here for you. <sighs> Who knows? YouTube is weird. YouTube is That's... weird. Yeah, she's doing that. Where did you get your fabric at for this? Uh, mine, I bought at QuiltCon. And the fabric that I have going with it, I got at um, another quilt show. But Becca's layer cake also came from QuiltCon. <laughs> I bought I mine from one. Fat Quarter Shop. And I got mine from the... Uh, my local quilt store. Hey, um, were your guys' uh, blocks in your layer cake, did they really measure 10 inches? I don't know. I starched them before I started cutting. I don't know. I didn't measure them. I'm just no idea. randomly I didn't measure. Mine. But my, I have had Teresa. I they have had all... Teresa, I bought a Tula layer cake when I first started quilting. And the squares did not measure 10 inches they were like nine and a half yeah that's what mine were 
and it was from the manufacturer. It was not, pre, it was not hand cut by the shop. Right. Yeah, I thought this was from the manufacturer here, the one in the I just counted right now. What did you say, Scott? How many yards per backing is recommended? Yeah. We're not working with backing right now. So there's no way to know. You have to count it, use the Rob's Coffee app. You can get it for your phone. We don't know how big these quilts are going to be yet. <laughs> yeah. It used the Robert Kaufman app and it's the for measuring how much fabric you need for your bag. Oh, thank you, sewing Barbie. I appreciate that. <laughs> there. Gene. Let's count how long it'll take before this falls down. Ten, <laughs> nine, eight, <laughs> seven. <laughs> G and B, I'm making um, the pattern is called. Uh, I got to look back at the blog. It is Spring Picnic Quilt Block, uh, and I have posted the link in the chat. Um, I'll post it again really quick. Well, I don't know how to answer that question i um she said i'm referring to just adding backing to stashing to stash adding backing to stash uh, mm -hmm. when i when i um see a fabric i think would look good as a backing i buy at least five yards sometimes eight mm -hmm. so um For new quilters, I highly recommend all-in-one quilters reference tool book. And it'll give you all that information in here. Really good book. You can get this on Amazon. All-in-one quilters reference tool. It has yardage requirements, cutting instructions, setting secrets, choosing your supplies, piecing techniques, and more. And more. But wait, <laughs> that's not all. Yeah. We're For just an additional $9.99. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but wait, and there's more. If you act now. <laughs> We'll throw in a second one for only 100% of the original price. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get two for the price of two. <laughs> but you'll save on shipping. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're so funny. Silly. That kills me. I like it when they over exaggerate how difficult things are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the, bl the black and white footage that they do in infomercials where the lady's trying to like sit in a chair and she like, <gasps> oh, oh, like <laughs> Although wait, what happened with me on your channel? I mean, it could be true. Oh dude, listen. So the um <laughs> it's so funny. The I fell out of my chair, you fell out of your chair here, and then Mary was over here looking at the computer with me and she fell out of that chair. Oh no. It's you just have a falling out chair house. That's what it is. I think there's a ghost that lives in my house. <laughs> like, they, they just don't want them. anyone in there. I oh, and Nicole just tripped going up the stairs to get dinner. So um I think there's a ghost that likes to watch people fall and play with my dog. <laughs> Sounds I mean, like his name it. is Beetlejuice, after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Michael Keaton. And right. He lives in our home. And he's like, right. I get it. We, and the, the ghost showed up because when we brought the dog here, we had to say Beetlejuice three times. There you go. The first, like we walked in the door. 
And I was like, here, Beetlejuice. And he was like, come on, do I hear two? Do I hear three? He's <laughs> <laughs> fun for a design wall or fleece. What do you guys use for a design wall? Flannel, fleece, batting? What, what do you use? Batting. Just batting? Yep. Design this is wall, actually, what's that? This is actually- <laughs> I know, mine should be getting made. So this is one of the off the wall design boards. I've got this size and then a really big size. This one I leave put together and I just kind of put up next to my, um, my long arm and I pull it out only when I really need to see something. But for the most, most part, I really don't need to use a big design wall. So something small like this works, but I've used batting in the past and it's worked perfectly. I just tack the batting up to the wall and go with that. My original design wall was cardboard wrapped in muslin with wow. some basting spray on it. And it, you know, stays sticky forever and a day. But let's just say that thing was covered in so much thread. I bet. <laughs> oh, damn. That's the one thing that I kind of liked about the batting is when it's done, you can put it into a quilt that doesn't have any white fabric. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put a new fresh piece up. I have one um, that is, I use, <laughs> well, I have Did one that I use batting design wall, and then my other design wall um, is a like a fleece blanket that I got at a yard sale or Goodwill, one of the two. I can't remember what. But, and it works pretty much like a piece of batting, so. Becca, someone said in the chat that you need to put seatbelts on all your chairs. <laughs> They're not lying. <laughs> Don't be surprised in June, Ian, if there's a seatbelt on your chair. I'll just replace your yeah, seat. I'll, re I'll replace your chair at the, at your table with right. like one of those wheelchairs that has like the airplane lap belt that goes across it. That would be great. That would be totally hilarious. It will be hilarious. And I'll make sure to film your reaction when you walk in and see it and be like, right. what is this? Yes. Oh, you don't even know, do you? Oh, you poor thing. You're clumsy. I'm going to get one of those um, chair lifts that goes down the steps to the right. basement so you yes. can't fall. And you'll have to buckle into that, too. The funny thing is your mom will love having that. Yeah. Oh, I know. When she finally moves in. <laughs> yep. Actually, no, but yeah. <laughs> Also, last night on your live, Becca, you, you, um, when Jason said he made a face at you, uh -huh. I, I put in the chat, um, that was the face I got. That was the face I got when I fell down the stairs. Yeah, probably. It was like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nicole, Ian, when he was here last in November, no, 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 no. I know you saw that one. He fell down the steps going to the basement like oh, on the second step down yeah. Yeah. he fell and so jason was sitting in his office and i was upstairs laying down and we just heard boop, 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 boop. and jason goes what the hell was that yeah. <laughs> and i was like oh there's nobody crying so i just went back to bed <laughs> yeah he fell down the stairs not just out of the chair i know down the stairs and that was after we got beetlejuice so it it stands up to the ghost pushing you down the flight of stairs <laughs> did you hurt yourself Ian? Uh, i was fine i i got a little bit <laughs> the stairs are carpeted so i did get a, like a little bit of rug burn on my leg a little bit but it was fine it wasn't anything bad i used to slide down carpeted stairs when i was a kid on my butt <laughs> We bounce so much more easily as kids. Yes, we do. Yeah. Oy, 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 oy. <laughs> that means two yeah. things. Keep it G rated. 
I mean, it's a spring or you bounce back or you're a tigger. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> See, Scott was following me. You're the one that took it there, Tiffany. Yeah, I know. Dirty mind me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Becky, my um, quilt guild, they use a, a large tablecloth, you know, that like a picnic tablecloth, I guess it is, because the back of it ha has that, I don't know what kind of material it is, but it helps it stick to the surface. And uh, It's the grabby, grabby material. We'll just call yeah. it that. Grabby, grabby. Grabby, grabby. How often does your quilt guild meet, Teresa? Because you can't, over the winter, I saw you couldn't even get out of your house a couple of times. Uh, they meet once a month, but it's just right down the road. Oh, got it. I could walk <laughs> down there if I wanted to. <laughs> you posted some of those videos of you like shoveling your driveway and everything. And I was like, no, thank you. Oh, I know. It's terrible. It is I starting tell that to melt. Every time her yard is covered in snow, I'm like, no, mm -mm, not me. <laughs> keep it away. Keep it away. Keep it away. Keep it away now. Right? It's still covered in snow. <laughs> yep, you keep it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is starting to melt. There's a few um, spots that I can see the grass now. Although it would be kind of cool if it was really, really snowy. And the snow was up almost to the second story of a third story house. And then you jump off the third story into the snow. Oh I don't know how gosh. to get out, but I would do that. No, oh, yeah. No, that no. Would, no, no. That would be cool. Yeah. This is spoken from somebody who apparently doesn't live with snow. If the snow comes up to the second story of the home, there are much more pressing issues than jumping <laughs> off of the roof of your house into a bank of snow. Yeah. <laughs> this is coming from the lady who's like ooh but we're you... outside let's climb on the roof well they've been doing that in northern california or you know in the um tahoe area i think it is in the mountains above tahoe ian what's the name of the quote behind you so the quilt behind me is um, a pattern called Air Traffic Control. It is by Crimson Tate. It is a paper piecing pattern. Paper piecing pattern. Try saying that five times fast. Okay. Um, paper piecing pattern. Paper piecing pattern. Paper piecing paper pattern. Piecing. Okay, I'll stop. I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, it's a paper piecing pattern, and it is called Air Traffic Control. I love it. It came out so well. This was actually the first one that I quilted myself. Um, and I used Crimson Tate offers paper looking fabric. So these actually look like uh, pieces of lined paper. And it's funny because when I show this quilt off, people are like, did you use paper on that quilt? And it was like, well, technically, yes. But no, that is paper fabric. I know that fabric. I got some of that fabric. I used it. I don't have it anymore. It's gone. It's gone. I love it. Lily says, didn't you grow up in Michigan with lots of snow? Yes. So when we see snow banks that get up past, you know, mid calf, I'd say. Definitely knee. It is not exciting time. It is, oh, crud. Did I fill the freezer with enough food time? <laughs> and it's about that time when you start thinking about calling off work. And he's like, remember snow growing up? Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, I remember, I remember taking the trash out when I was a kid one time and the snow was like past my knee. And for a long time, I was probably about six or so. For a long time, I kept thinking, when is the snow going to get up past my knee again? And it didn't occur to me until I was an adult that the reason why the snow wasn't up that high on my body anymore is because I was getting taller, but the amount of snow was still the same. 
<laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I went um, for a walk with Brandon the other day and we tried taking the back way, you know, that's not on a road that hasn't been plowed. So we're walking on top of the snow and I'm, I'm trying to walk really carefully so I don't fall in and we get quite a ways. And then all of a sudden Brandon just went, <laughs> right Oh no! And it went up above his knees. That's how deep. Oh gosh. Snow is. Yeah. And he's six, three. So. Oh geez. Ow. Yeah. That's a lot of snow still on the ground. Yeah. I am cutting my rectangles to make fine yeast. So I'm modifying this a little bit from the pattern. The way the pattern tells you to put this together is to make a ton of half square triangle units and use that for the star legs. But I decided that I'm, um, I'm making flying geese for the star legs instead because I think that looks better. So I'm cutting all my little rectangles to do that. <laughs> Patsy said, I have five brothers. Snow was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> we made it over to, uh, there's a, a gazebo quite a ways away from the house. It's, it's not ours. It belongs to the school, but... Um, and so all the snow from that gazebo, you know, has slid off the, the roof. And it's like as tall as me on the side of the gazebo. Gosh. And uh, Brandon was like, boy, if I was a kid, I would be making forts into that snowbank. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I remember getting like when it would snow, you would build you dig a trench and try to build an igloo. And then it was always, should I get the hose out and get the igloo wet so that I can put ice over top of it to make it last longer? I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and did you do that? I, re I think we did that once or twice. Do you remember that? Nicole's saying no. Maybe I did that in my dreams. <laughs> Yeah, snow's fun when you're a kid. <laughs> it's snow fun when you're an adult. Mwah, yeah. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I remember you, <laughs> wait, our parents were split up and our dad brought us back to my mom's house one Sunday night and we walk, we get out of the car and we go to walk up the driveway and the driveway was icy and Nicole slipped and fell and her leg ended up underneath her. And she goes in the house. She's complaining about how her leg hurts, how her leg hurts, how her leg hurts. And my mom's like, you're fine. Go sleep on it. You'll be okay. And it was like the next day or the day after they took her to the hospital. She broke her leg. Oh, <laughs> oh no. She was just, the mom was like, and put some Windex on it. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mom felt so horrible. She's like, oh, I bet. Oh. Gosh. She, she thought she was just exaggerating and blowing it out of proportion. No, Nicole had a broken leg. <laughs> Linda wants to know if I sewed any more of my rainbow log cabin blocks. No, not. Not this, uh, not today I didn't, but it is on my list to maybe work on tomorrow. We'll see. I can tell the seasons are changing because the sun has really started coming through my blinds again. You have things called light. Okay. I can... How many ounces does your bottle hold? Like 24. But when it gets down this low, it starts to do this thing where it kind of leaks a little bit. And I'm, I don't know if that's because of the bottle or because of just the way I'm holding it. So still testing to see. Really liking how these blocks are coming out. I'm really liking how the starch is coming out. <laughs> This seems to be a theme. Last night on the live, what did I do? I starched fabric. What am I doing here? Starching fabric. Starching fabric. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
don't need to actually do any sewing. We'll just starch fabric. <laughs> I'm going to change my name to Iron Becca. There you go. <laughs> See, now you know why I just don't take the time to starch. If a block needs starched after it's made, then maybe, but I think it's just a waste of time in the beginning. <laughs> just like pre-washing. Unless you know what, it's like Tiffany? a horrible red. <laughs> you know what, Tiffany? This is for you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Your room just doesn't get to smell like this lovely lavender. That's that's it. That's your problem. You, that's your fault. I'd probably fall asleep smelling the lavender all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like going to sew after I've starched my fabric and be like, bam, hit my head on the sewing machine. <laughs> I think like, that would make it so all good. <laughs> that needs to be an awesome short. Like, could you picture like you're, you're like a short where you're like sewing, right? And then it cuts over to the Iron Man and he sprays some purple liquid. And he's just like pressing away and then it cuts back to you and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. It would be funny. You're welcome. I just gave everybody a laugh. He's, he's in the background <laughs> saying I should let him iron more. Didn't you take that job away from him? Huh? Did you take that job away from him? Well, right now I'm ironing because I'm keeping things in an order and if I pass it to him, it'll get out of order. <laughs> He'll iron it, but it'll be out of order. And I'm in an order mode. <laughs> Digital Donna says, my son jumped off the top bunk beds and complained about pain. I told him it was nothing. Two days later in the ER, they told us his toe was broken. Oh, oh man. Gosh. Wow. Whoops. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Oh, hey, hello. What's everybody's preference for starching your fabric? For starching oh, for your starching. Oh, I don't use starch. I never What starch. kind of starch? I use the best press. Never starch. I use Fontless, the spray can, if I need it, the heavy starch one. That's what I use too. Yeah, that's what I use too. Yeah, but I rarely starch, so. I only use best press and that's it. I don't use starch otherwise. Um, and I like, I like to get the wrinkles out of my fabric before I cut it. I do mostly, but if I'm like doing something like quick, I tend to ignore wrinkles and just start sewing. <laughs> yep. I did, I did use best press on mm -hmm. all of the fabrics for my legit oh, kit, um, which I'm noticing yeah. is is helping with the legit kit a lot. Look at that fabric. Video doing what? This one? Oh, yes, 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 yes. It'll be on a Monday, I think. Which legit kit are you doing? I'm working huh? on. I'm working on Margaret the Boxer right now. I oh. have. I have another one. That I'm working on here shortly, but more info soon. I'm working on a Violet Craft one. It's the tiger. I saw last oh, night. Oh, did you see my eye, my tiger eyes? I got them done. Yes, they look so good. Well, Tiffany, did you see them? See what? My tiger <laughs> eyes. You should show everybody. I will you have show them right everybody. There. Okay. You ready? Mm hmm Make yourself big. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't herself. need to make herself big for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> you guys didn't know I was so funny, did you? Oh, we knew. Oh, the we definitely knew. Around. We definitely knew. They look pretty good. Wow. I also saw you have to rip some of your seams last night. Yes, I did. Because I started on B instead of A. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, where am I going? Oh, I, just, I just tried to iron my, um, individual, like, not even a full block. I just walked away. It was like, okay, time Ian to iron. Oh, wait. No, Ian is doing it. Which one of you is doing the uh, monthly legit kit thing? Just you, Ian? Um, 
No, Ian and I both are doing that. Yeah. Okay. Although I'm not going to be doing I no tutorials. Idea. I'm just uh, sewing it and showing my progress. Is there any word on it? Does either of you know? That was the question. Any word on the monthly? Well, no. it's, it's happening. I know okay. that. Funny, you should mention it. They are testing, we're testing the pattern soon and there will be a timeline delivered shortly. So just keep your eyes peeled to the website. And as soon as we know something, we'll post it on social media too. So you won't yeah, miss it. They will be able to post it on their pages because I'm not doing that one this time. Well, you could still post it on your page too, Tiff. Oh, I know. You still have an affiliate link. You still would get some of the moolahs. I promise you everybody will hear about it as soon as we are able to start posting about it. Promise you. <laughs> okay, looks like some of the people in the chat do know that I am silly. <laughs> oh, well. Well, for more further silliness, don't forget to subscribe to Teresa's That's channel. Right. And for yep. more silliness from Ian, don't forget to subscribe to his channel. And Becca, definitely don't forget to subscribe to her craziness. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't forget to subscribe to Ian's channel because you might get to witness him falling out of his chair. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us are a bit silly at times. Yeah. Although lately I've been in the more serious mode. It's kind of weird. What's well, up with that? a lot of stuff going on. It's I think it's I'm in a lot of pain. So like, mm. yeah. I can't get that laughter through lately. Like it's like, just get things done kind of thing. No so I'm puppies. Not a, I'm not my normal self. That's a negative ghost writer. I know, go away. Oh, I played with you. <laughs> Jason's in there going, go. They don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to call the ASPCA and be like, Becca, tell her dog that nobody loves her. Her husband says nobody wants you. <laughs> you guys are animal abusers. <laughs> but if you saw the amount of cuddles and kisses that okay. puppy gets, yeah, he's definitely overloved. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's spoiled. Spoiled. Question for Becca. Hello, Susan. What's the question for me? When you oh. get a chance, Becca, you should post a picture with his new outfit on. I will. I will. And his we, collar. Well, okay. So funny thing talking about outfits. Funny thing. We had uh, we had bought these licking sleeves. They're kind of like dog onesies and they've got snaps of around the tail and stuff that you put on for post-surgery because we had the surgery. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And we put it on him, but he has figured out how to use his little teepers to undo the snaps. So <gasps> we were like, oh man, come on. He hasn't taken any of the stitches out because we ended up putting the collar back on him with that. And we're like, okay, well, he's, we're going to have to do this. And then I started thinking, I was like, well, he can't get to his stitches when he has the fabric covering it. And the problem right now, and he leaves it alone if there's fabric over it, but what he keeps doing is trying to take off his onesie and he keeps using his teeth to unsnap it. So Hubby and I went out this uh, afternoon to get some stuff for Easter and we bought two zipper or two zippered up onesies, like sleeper onesies for uh, three month old, zero to three months, brought him home. I cut the feet off of both of them and put a slit in it for the hole for his tail and put uh -huh. that on it so that the zippers on top of his back, he can't get to anything now. And he's leaving his stitches like it, it's, it works perfectly. Donna told me when we told her we were going to get the surgery, she was like, you need to get a onesie for him you're you'll regret it if you don't get a onesie get a onesie and i was like okay well i looked on amazon they had the dog thing so i got the dog thing save your money if you do this if you have a dog small enough to fit into a onesie with a zipper do the onesie with a zipper i promise you that's the right way to go huh. good idea so 
we actually, it's been almost a week since the procedure. He has to wear the collar for two weeks, but he is leaving the incision site completely alone. So while he's walking around the house and stuff, um, he can't get to the stitches with the, with the way the onesies on it, but we're not, we are not making him wear the collar right now, but we are keeping a close eye on him. And if he starts to show any interest in that area, then we're putting the collar back on because I'm not going to take a chance. Will you be sewing tonight? LOL. Susan wants to know. Uh, sewing where? Here in my room? <laughs> Do you mean like staying up all night? I don't know. Oh, Somebody we have a visitor. Oh, hi. Aww. Thumper came to say hi. Thumper, do you want a brother? Thumper, <laughs> you want a brother? I'm talking about a puppy, so I had to come because no puppy feels the show. Only me. <laughs> oh, Thumper wants a brother. He wants to, he wants to hang out with Beetlejuice. He says, I'll straighten that pup out. <laughs> Dude, we we uh, figured out that Tommy <laughs> is training the dog. So Tommy comes down the steps and sits like the second or third step up from the bottom. And he sits there and he stares at the dog and he keeps coming down a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. We keep a baby gate at the bottom of the stairs. And now he comes down and sits on the floor on the other side of the baby gate. And he just sits there and stares at the dog. And we thought he was looking at the dog to like, why are you here? Well, as soon as the dog comes within a certain perimeter of him, he'll hiss at him, or he used to. He doesn't hiss anymore. But if the dog comes in Tommy's presence and starts getting hyper, the cat hisses at him and runs away, and then he'll come back down the stairs. If the hmm. dog comes in his presence and remains calm and sits in front of him, then the cat will sit and just kind of like look at him. And he'll be calm, which is what the dog wants. He wants to investigate the cat. So the cat will allow him to investigate him as long as the dog stays calm. The second the dog starts to get hyper, the cat hisses at him and runs off. And I'm like, that's why the dog's starting to get calmer because the cat's teaching him how to be. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> Well, it sounds like they're starting to get used to each other anyway. It is. Uh, I, my allergies are still not used to the cat, though. But, yeah, they're, they're getting along. Or piles are starting to disassemble oh. themselves. <laughs> Everybody's asking about Majuki. Majuki is a this new no. one. Oh, the one that went to the shop. I have no idea. I have What's the shop? Oh, yeah, it went on Thursday. The shop to get fixed. What kind of fixed? Uh, electrical. Never mind. It's an electrical problem. You're fixing the wiring? Yep. The wiring. Most likely the, the extension cord that it was plugged into shorted it out. <laughs> oh, gosh. Man, you shouldn't use those janky extension cords that you get in boxes that people send to you you never know what kind of crap they're sending your way tiffany and i'm joking <laughs> because i sent her the extension cord that is not a shade at anyone else i sent her the extension cord she got all excited she's like i can't wait to use this and then it fried her machine <laughs> um, i will take ownership of that one. extension cord that was causing your machine to have problems Actually, I found out what's causing my machine to have problems. It wasn't the it? extension cord. What was it? Do you remember Ian saying, hey, Becca, 
you should unplug that USB fan that's in the long arm because I wonder if that's causing problems. I was like, no, no, Ian, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, yeah, that was it. Did you plug your channel locks back in? One yep, they've been plugged in for weeks and not a problem. Yeah, I, no. Becca, I think you need to start listening more to your friends. <laughs> well, you know, like my friends were like, you're over oiling the juki. I was like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I know. No, I'm, not. I'm wondering how. <laughs> I don't remember how many times we said that to you. <laughs> At least 1,500. <laughs> Two. Two. No, no, no. And my husband says that all the time. He's like, okay, you just didn't listen to me. I told you what, to, what the problem was. So I was like, Ugh. like, no, no, that's not the problem. That's not the problem. That's, that's not, not it. the that's problem. Not. No, Ian, it's not the USB fan. It couldn't be the USB fan. <laughs> Which Ian probably hung up the phone, rolled his eyes, and went, okay. <laughs> well, honestly, you, you insisted so much that it wasn't the problem. I'm like, okay, it's not the problem. All right, cool. I, I really thought it was the channel locks. The way that you were describing the issue, I thought it was the channel locks. I thought it was, too. Yeah. That's what I thought. I had so many people convinced it was the channel locks on sure. <laughs> oh boy. This is why I'm not an electrician. Oh, Karen says, did you ladies and Ian see that they have found a problem with Laura Lynn? Oh, 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 what is it? What is it? What is it? I want to know. Let us know what oh, it is. Oh, here it is. It's right here. Um, Everyone, good evening, everyone from Winnipeg, Manitoba. It was good to watch Kent and Marcus work on a quote this afternoon for YouTube. They now know that LL has an obstruction in her small bowel. Mm -hmm. oh. Good to hear. Good to hear that well, they found. Like, what's the next step? To, you have to have surgery. Okay, so it's not like any, I mean, it's serious, but it's fixable. Yes, it is fixable. Good. Good. Huh? Which, which can cause oh. obstructions yes uh somebody said i wasn't talking very much tonight i'm sorry <laughs> well i'm sharing He's passionately time with everybody working else. on his project well and i'm also sharing time with everybody else i want to make sure I, I at work a lot of times i have to like stop myself from just interjecting at every single moment in meetings because i want to give other people opportunities to talk Hey, Ian. What? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is that? What, is, what does that mean? What is happening? I'm glad they... Do we want to talk about... Uh, Becca kind of mentioned at the top, do we want to talk about what we're hoping to do later? I know we you mentioned it. Did we want to talk about what we were thinking about for the rest yeah. of the year? I think you, I think now's a great time. Go for it, Ian. You brought it up. You talk. Yeah, you talk. I will. Um, so obviously we're over here on Tiffany's channel right now. Um, later in the year, we don't, we don't have exact dates picked just yet, but we're working on them. We will, I promise you, we will let you know across all of our social media what we're going to be doing and when. So just make sure that you're subscribed to us and checking us out on social media. Uh, but later this year, we're, we're, aiming for like seasonally is that a word seasonally yep. Yep. seasonally to do um one of these types of events uh next up is going to be summer and that's teresa right yep teresa's doing summer summer yep so teresa's then, gonna do summer and then ian for the fall can you guess what holiday if you guys have been following him <laughs> Can you can y'all guess which holiday <laughs> I'm going to be doing mine around? Um, um, Labor Day. Yes, that. Like, no, no, that's not right. That's in September. Your holiday is in October. Columbus Day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it will be a Halloween <laughs> stream. <laughs> it will be a hollow scream. Oh gosh. <laughs> Only Ian. Yep. That's me. <laughs> yeah, everybody's saying Halloween. <laughs> and then after that, Becca's gonna take on the winter time. 
we're gonna we're we're gonna go past Christmas, uh, Christmas, past, Hanukkah, past and Kwanzaa, and we're gonna head towards winter. And Becca will be taking over the winter. We're gonna celebrate my birthday. And you, you know what? You, you all are just gonna have to let it go. Oh, let it go. Let it, let let it, it go. snow. Let it snow. Can't hold it back anymore. No? Okay. Sure. <laughs> <sighs> I'm Scott's in the background singing. The cold doesn't bother me anyway. <laughs> that was the top dog movie in this house for like four years oh yeah with all the kids gosh i haven't thought about the kids in a while too how are they doing i have no idea haven't heard from them ever since all that drama oh yeah, i know that they moved out of state that's all i know for a while there you couldn't see tiffany without one of those little minions walking in yeah people still watch those old videos and ask me who are those kids oh yeah because there's no kids now yeah <laughs> yo patty g what up she asked uh oh wow great idea what is in store from the seasonal four? Oh, that's a good name for oh. us the seasonal four Oh, that is a good, why a didn't we think of that? I don't know. Becca, Ian, Teresa, you guys got problems. Shit, that was bad. Just kidding. <laughs> seasonal seasonal four. four. I like that. That's great. The can we, can, we need to come up with like a thumbnail that we can use where each of us, we each have our profile picture, but we have like a tint or a filter for our season over top of it. Like Teresa could have like a Caribbean beach background and we'll get like something really springy for tiffany i'll have i'll wear a beanie <laughs> <laughs> and ian will just have a costume on <laughs> yep well, well when we were talking about meeting we talked about for my halloween one that we would all dress up in costumes for it we'd have a costume party yeah well, that would be fun. Any time to dress up is a good time for me. I actually, so I was the um, president of the local modern quilt guild, and I wasn't able to go to quilt con. This was pre COVID. Um, it was in Pasadena. I think it was the one in Pasadena. I might be wrong. Um, and I wasn't able to go. Some of my members weren't able to go. So I said, all right, we're going to do a pity party, a not going to quilt con pity party. And we all dressed up in our pajamas. We brought snacks and we all just had a great time looking at the photos that were popping up on social media. And we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Any, any time to dress up. I wore a unicorn onesie. Everybody loved it. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna come. I, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start working on my costume now. Excellent. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, you know I'm really kind of surprised you didn't come to the airport to pick me up in a costume. I thought uh, there oh, was a I chance will, that you might. I have. will this time. Don't worry. <laughs> I already know what I'm going to do. <laughs> it was funny too because Becca was actually watching me because I was sending her Marco Polos as I was like landing as I, not as I was landing, but like once I deplaned as I was making it, because if you've ever been to Dulles airport, Dulles, right? Yeah. Dulles. Um, there, it, there's a good distance between the gates and the carousels, the luggage carousels. And so I'm sending her Marco Polos as I'm <laughs> making my way to the uh, luggage area. I just saw a comment that said, Tiffy, I love the blocks. So here, this is the blocks I'm making. Oh, that's pretty. I love that pop of like color. Oh, oh, wow. They're all different, too. They're all not the same. Yeah. Because I'm rotating the, the pieces. So they're all showing up in different sets. 
I can't wait to see what all of our different projects are going to look like. Me too. Problem is, is when I go to put them all together, the directional fabrics are not going to be directional no more. That's so okay. there'll be some upside down pandas and upside down zebras. And <laughs> Mine's going to be upside down too. Same. Not mine. I don't think that part really matters. <laughs> Trace is up there going, not mine. Mine's going to be perfect. Y'all are going to be like, no. oh, it won't be perfect. Fabric. But... Well, I guess if you put the quilt upside down, then it will be upside down. <laughs> That's one of yeah. the questions I get a lot for the puzzle mystery quilts. I see in like um, the puzzle mystery group on Facebook and such, people are like, how do I know which way to put the directional fabric? Cause some of the choices have directional fabric in it. And it's like, you just, you just got to get over the fact that some of them are just going to be upside down. It just is going to happen that way. Yeah. Yep. It takes a lot of efforts to keep everything right side up for directional fabrics to keep it all in the same direction. Well, and especially with the puzzle mystery quilts, you don't know what the final product looks like. And so there's yeah. no way to accommodate for making it right side up, you know? Yeah. Which I love. I always love how they end up coming out because the, the patterns are just so much fun. Okay. But it does mess with my OCD a little bit. Well, I, I spent go time. I've got a couple of quilts where I took the time to make sure that every single piece of fabric that I put into that quilt was, if it was directional, it was going in the right direction. Even, and it was a star quilt. It was actually the spring chicken quilt. That's one of them. And then the rose and balloon block of the month that I did with Fat Quarter Shop, I did it with that too. And it took a lot of work, a lot of extra time. A lot of recutting when I accidentally wasn't, didn't have it turned the right way to cut it correctly. But the end result, like maybe nobody else sees it, but I see it and it makes me so mm -hmm. happy. Like all my words can be reading, read because read it. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking like I do all the time. I'm just going to go back to starching fabric. <laughs> Oh, Mary's here. Hey, Mary. Hi, Mary. Mary, there are pandas in this fabric line. I thought of you when I was cutting the fabric. <laughs> the crafty panda. So there was a question earlier in the chat. What made us want to start a YouTube channel? Oh, somebody else go first. I've done a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, how about you? Uh, my friends made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> we all showed up at her house and said, listen, <laughs> it's going to be this or nothing. <laughs> um, well, I guess the main reason why I started out was to share some free motion quilting. Yeah. Um, tips and stuff using the brother's sewing machine and then you know I just kept going and and I like the company most of my videos lately for the past year have just been live going live and uh, being able to chat with people and you know when you're stuck <laughs> at home it gets a little boring you know uh, you can't go 100% so it was a way to meet, you know, talk, visit, meet new people, stuff like that. So that's basically why. And you, Becca, yeah. kept, Becca kept saying, you should, you should do it, Teresa. You should do it, Teresa. You should do it. Like I said, we all should. Too. Yeah, Tiffany, yeah. you did too. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> we all showed up at her door. We were like, listen, yeah. you're going to do this. But she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> How about you, Ian? Uh, quick answer to Donna. Donna asked, are you three ladies and gentlemen using the same kind of fabric? Yes, we are using the, the line work layer cake. We all had the same layer cake. 
but we're doing them all in different ways. So, so yes, you see the same fabric incorporated into all of what and we're working on. Scott's been putting a link to where you can find this layer cake in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, I actually started my YouTube channel. It was originally, if you go back and look at the videos on my channel, you'll actually see that I started off as a greeting card maker. Um, I was in a group of friends who are all um, cricket people and crafters, paper crafters and such. And we all kind of started YouTube channels um, and they were like, you should make one, you should make one. And I was like, all right, all right. So I made a YouTube channel and I started making cards and stuff on my channel. And then um, I ended up kind of, it was, it went well for a while, for a couple of years. And then I moved into an apartment and I had a roommate. And so that kind of changed my creative flow and I didn't really have one for a little bit because I had to work around my roommate which was fine we she was great and there was no problem there at all it just I didn't become my my creative mojo just wasn't there anymore um and I also started to do more quilting and sewing and all that kind of stuff and so over the past like year ish, um, I've been really trying to build back my YouTube channel, but I've been more focusing on sewing content and such. So it's kind of how I got going. Becca. Um, I actually started a YouTube channel a long time ago, like when Zoe was a baby, because I was uploading all of her videos and I always, <laughs> I just would use it to send pictures or videos of Zoe to family and friends. But what started for me is when I started sewing, a friend of mine was teaching me things that I needed to know, like how to change the needle on my machine, because that was a big deal and I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I was like, oh, this is great. This is a great tip. And I can't find what I'm looking for from my machine because I thought it was had to be machine specific. I didn't know any better. So I recorded my very first video, which I just marked private yesterday because it's so horrible compared to what I can do now, um, was a video where I was trying to change the needle with one hand and holding the camera with the other hand. And I <laughs> uploaded that to YouTube and it was like a five minute video or whatever. And I, I always had the intention of doing more videos to show people, namely my family and friends oh. that I was convinced I was going to teach how to sew. I was going to upload more videos. I had all these ideas, but it was really cumbersome to record on my phone. And I didn't have a computer to edit on. I didn't have a tablet to edit on. I didn't have anything like that. So I, I knew I didn't want it to be raw. I wanted it cleaned up and I, I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know what to use. I had to learn all of that. So I just kind of sat and did nothing for like two years, a year, two years. And one day I log into my YouTube channel, my YouTube account, and I realized that video had like 30,000 views. And I was like, oh, maybe I should make some more videos. And so I sat on that for a while. Um, I've always kind of had the desire to do, to make the content. I just didn't know what type of content to make. So I started doing some unboxing videos and showing some of that stuff off and segued into doing some live streams. Occasionally I tossed in a sew along or a, a a tutorial video or a demo, but I think what people, what I would like people to know my channel for now is the vlog type activity that I do, like the community, the personality that I'm putting out there. Um, definitely the live streams I do on Friday nights, the weekly vlogs that I do on Tuesdays and spruced in there, I'll be, I do occasional uploads for unboxings for some things that I still get that I absolutely like or love. And I want to start a new thing. I already kind of started it, but it's been a while since I've done one. So I want to do more. I want to do more storytelling and showcasing how my quilts are coming together from start to finish. I kind of did that a little bit with the Quiltmas collab that we all were a part of last year. I did it with my video for that and I did it for my Monica quote too, but I need to get a couple more out there because I haven't done one in a while. So 
I kind of answered that question and then went off on a tangent because I am known to do that. So I'll stop talking now. Well, what started mine was I posted the same as you. I had my YouTube channel forever because I was uploading videos for the family to watch. I'd send yep. them the link and they'd watch it. Since then, a long time ago, I made all that private because I uploaded, I made that wheelchair makeover video and I uploaded it and a ton of people watched it. I was like, wow, okay. Yep. So I posted another video and that was the ruler quilting ruler secret, which Tracy from the sewing channel actually took my advice from that and then upgraded it a little bit. And then she made it into one of her videos and then, you know, said my name and all that. So, but that original video that got a ton of views. And I was like, wow. And people were even sh sharing it because they didn't know Tiff Groff was the same person, you know, they were sharing it on Facebook in the other groups that I was in like quilters groups, you know, uh -huh. and, uh, I was seeing my video. I was like, wow, really? This is crazy. So that's just, I started going live and I didn't even have 20 subscribers, maybe 30. And then, yeah, I started going live because you didn't have a, a limit back then. You can go mm -hmm. live from any device at any time on YouTube. And I started going live and just meeting people all over the world that would come on and just randomly find my videos. And then they just started subscribing and hanging out with me. So it was mainly like Teresa for the chat thing. I, I had the company and Scott actually liked it because, you know, I had things to do and people to talk to. And when I couldn't sleep, I was out in the garage sewing and I was chatting with friends. So it was kind of cool. And then it just turned into what it is now. <laughs> now, now it's my job and hobby. Yeah, that's my hobby over job, though, always. I saw somebody ask the um, chat message went it went by, but somebody asked, um, why do we have a machine that we, why do we use the machine that we use? That's, that's what it was. It was something to oh. that effect. <laughs> that's funny in that you went to that one because Scott was just going to ask that one next. Oh, well, there you go. Well, I use this machine because this is my temporary machine. So anytime I need a temporary <laughs> machine, I have a machine. But the question was, what's your go-to and why? So why is Juki your favorite? Juki is my favorite because they make a fast machine. <coughs> and I like fast machines. Teresa, you? Um, my go-to machine for piecing quilts is my <laughs> brother's. PQ 1500 SL. It's a great, I think it's a great machine. Um, really nice straight stitch, but you know, you only have one stitch available on this. And uh, it is pretty fast. It's a 1500. So, and I haven't had any problems with it. I've had it for over six years now. That's, uh, yeah, this is my go-to machine. I and it have... also, oh, I'm sorry. It also, no, go ahead. Um, just real quick, it's really great for if you want to do free motion quilting because it comes with a little table extension thing. And um, yeah, it works pretty good for free motion. Now I'm done. <laughs> I uh, use the, this is the Bernina 770 Quilters Edition, Tula Pink Edition. So it's very fitting so with today's fabric. Huh? It's a, it's a double edition, edition, yes. edition? Yeah, because <laughs> it literally says Quilters Edition, Tula Pink Edition. So, I, well, it doesn't say a special edition. So it says Quilters Edition and special edition. Go figure that one out. Huh. Anyways, huh. Um, so it's with I the thought, Quilters Edition, special edition, Tula Pink that's yes. a lot of words <laughs> it is a lot of words isn't it um but yeah i um i had used i had a, a i started sewing on a singer like one that you get at joanne's the lower end version of that um and then when i really started getting into quilting and sewing i got a uh aurora for a bernina aurora 440 and loved it it was great uh, and then I went to QuiltCon in 2020, and this was on sale there, and they gave a deal that I could not puff up. And so I bought that one, and I have loved it ever since. 
So you're a Bernina man. I am a Bernina man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was I have the, the deal on that machine that it was available and you had money. No, no, it was actually like they they gave me a classroom price on it, which was shocking. So I I could not pass that price up. Wow. And then I bought the um, serger, the, what is that? The L860, I believe, if I remember the name correctly. Just recently bought that one, taking a class on Monday, how to use it, even though I've already started using it. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Scarlett's asking, how did you connect to no on your ruler? I have no idea what what I don't know what that means. What? I Bert, maybe she forgot a couple of words. Charlotte Churchwell said, "Becca, how did you connect to know on your ruler?" She's asked that more than once. I don't know what she means. I tell her to um, say it. it's a question for Becca. I don't Scott know. said she's asked it more than once. So he and he asked her to rephrase it. She says it's a question for Becca. Okay. So I don't know what that, that means. No. I do I did see somebody asked in yes, the, the knob. The knob. Oh, the knob. Um, How did I yeah, I I was gonna say I saw somebody had asked about what this is. It is just like a pop cap, but it's from Quilter Select. It's a little handle, it's suction cups suctions onto the ruler and what i find so the quilter select has that uh, uh anti-slip yes it doesn't move when it's on top of fabric like it doesn't move I, I can't move it and so i find the lady when i bought the rulers had mentioned getting one of these i think i actually want to get a few more uh, you could do use a pop cap for sure but the nice thing here is when I'm holding my ruler, I can put my fingers around it. And so if I need to move something, I just use the knob to lift it because it it's hard. You know, I can't move it without getting some air under there. I'm using mine without a knobby because it doesn't move. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that it that depends, right? My like, big one has the not the handle on it though, because I, that one it's hard to pick it up because you know. Yep. yep. The small ones I don't put it on there but the big one i i do so sorry i saw that asked earlier and i just got sidetracked um for my machine i'm so on the same machine that tiffany usually does it is the juki tl 2010q i got this machine i had been eyeballing a juki so um i wanted a machine that went faster and the speed I was looking for was only available in the high end, or the, the faster straight stitch only machines. I chose the Juki. I was thinking about the Juki. I liked the way it looked. And then the guys over at So Yeah called me and asked me if they could send one to me to try out and see if I liked it. And I was like, I get to sew on it for 90 days before I buy it to make sure I love it. Yes, yes, please send me one. So they sent one to me Christmas 2021, like right after we moved into the house. And I think within the first, like the whole thing was I was going to try it for 90 days and depend, decide if I was going to send it back or keep it. And I'll tell you what, I think within the first week, I was like, this thing ain't going back. It's so responsive. And all I ever really need is a straight stitch. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. Mm, that's why I love mine. Yep. Is this the end full-time job? Ian is no Ian has a regular job. So well, does Becca. You, Me and Teresa are the only ones that are homebodies that have this and household right. as our life. <laughs> did they want to know if Ian ever finished the black jacket that he pulled out of storage? Ian, yes. did you finish? Oh, he can hear yes, you on the phone. I um I saw that question. Uh yes, I did finish it sort of. Um I really want to get one of my friends who has tailor abilities <laughs> to work on it a little bit for me so i haven't actually worn it or done anything with it but yes i did finish it i'm just maybe they can help me refine it a little bit more 
don't bring it here. All right. <laughs> Maybe take it to Tiffany. Speaking of me, guess what? What? You'd be so proud of me. I have been sewing with no seam guide on this machine. Wow. I'm so proud wow. of you. Yeah, and it's almost straight. <laughs> <laughs> is that, uh, Charlotte's asking, is that the knob that you put on the back of your cell phone? No, that's not it, but it is very much like that. So if you wanted to grab one of those that you put on the back of a cell phone, that would work just as well. I would not suggest pop sockets, the certain pop sockets on the back of long arm rulers though, because when your hands are held on the rulers for long arm quilting and you have your fingers around the pop socket, some of those rulers are so small that you uh, will break lots of fingernails or sew through fingers and ask me how I know. Oh, because I know. Oh boy. <laughs> I, will, I will say I'm disappointed with some of the pop cap, the pop cap qualities lately. I just bought a custom one that has a wood inlay. It's really pretty from a quilt show. In fact, this is what it looks like. You can see the star wood block on the back. It's really neat, but it pops out of the socket frequently. And so I don't know that I would use one of those for a ruler just because it's not stable. Uh, how often do I oil my juki is a question. I well, <laughs> more frequently than oil. I oil, more <laughs> frequently than I oil mine. Oh yes, see I oil my juki one to two drops every two to six days, somewhere in there. Depends on how much I'm sewing, but I sew so much that mm -hmm. I don't I don't ever have the chance to over oil. So my machine runs a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and this is why I was over oiling my juki because Tiffany was like once a week. And I was like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I sew, sew more than every you. Day. I don't sew every day the way Tiffany does. So mm -hmm. that once a week probably really needed to be like once a month for me. <laughs> yeah, be honest. Well, keep no, it at once a month. Be and honest, none of us sew like Tiffany does. I, well, uh, hey, you guys think I sew a lot, but lately I have not. Because your machine's been gone. Because my machine is gone. <laughs> Because somebody sent you a box with a cruddy. Oh, <laughs> I don't blame you, Becca, for it. It could have been anything that it could have been that plug. It could have just been the Juki is old and I've had it and sewn on it for so long. Teresa, it is coincidental that it was electrical. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, what were you trying to say? I just said, I've been sewing a lot this week. <laughs> you have. I have. I'm tired. <laughs> one of the questions is where are we all from well i'm from yeah. california and live in arizona i don't care where i say i live <laughs> how about you guys oh, well hold on you gotta wait till we answer this question go ahead who else is answering the where are you from question I, wow. I'll, I'll go next i'm from dallas fort worth texas is that where you're from too? Like you were born yeah. there? Yeah, I was born, raised here in DFW. I've been here my entire life. Look at you uh -huh. staying in one place all your life. <laughs> I hope it's not the what happens though. I'm I would like to travel and live other places. Come on, Ian. I got a bedroom. I you I you ain't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta bring the serger though. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> She, she'll want you to make nightgowns for her. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Tiffany, you're not supposed to tell everybody that. <laughs> Let him move in first. <laughs> what and about you, I Teresa? Live, I live in uh, north central Idaho. In the mountains. Up in the Rockies. I am originally from the Detroit area. I 
lived there until I was almost 30. And then I moved to Virginia for a couple of years. I lived in Southwestern Virginia. And then I moved, gosh, I just cut this wrong. I moved um, to the Northern Virginia DC area. We've lived here since 2008. Somebody commented, let's see, who was that? Uh, Susan says, I have family in Wichita Falls and only, I'm not, I'm thinking there may have been a uh, autocorrect on that only because I don't know of a town in Texas named only, but I could be wrong. And then uh, we also have uh, So So Fun Creations is in Plano. You are a neighbor to me. Hello, neighbor. Hello. You are not a neighbor to me. I'm going to try and enter the Plano quilt show when it comes around in August. I'm going to spend this whole live stream cutting fabric. Brand new Jukies come already oiled. Nope. Not for your first, at least. Depends on how much you sew, honestly. So if you sew all the time, then you should oil it you know, within the first two weeks. If you don't, then don't oil it. I and oiled it right out of the month. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, you were cursed from it. the start. I was cursed from the start. <laughs> I kind of Well, she did talk her... to me a lot when she first got the Juki. We, we were discussing it, you know, so I was kind of giving her all these tips and tricks and pointers on having Juki. So it's probably my fault that she started doing all that. <laughs> Sweet. You can, I can, bl you can blame me for causing your electrical to short out. And I will blame you for the excess oil in my machine. <laughs> <laughs> so we both had to have our machine serviced because of each other. <laughs> I know where Mount Home is, Cheryl. Oh, I used God. to live in Boise. Okay, I got out of order. Hey, Nicole, we kind of grew, of I grew up in Boise. Show. Ooh, That's so so fun creations asks i would like to know how to enter a quilt show um first of all you got to find them there are several blogs and posts across the internet that talk about um shows across the country and even around the world um and each show is completely different um i've started entering a lot of shows and becca has recently started entering shows with the help of mary um a lot of different shows want different things and you enter different ways. Um, so make sure to check the, like, usually a lot of times they have like a PDF that you can download of their rules, um, instructions, all that kind of stuff. Um, so take the time to make sure to read that document. I, I'm guilty of not doing that <laughs> and not necessarily not doing the right thing, but not knowing the answers that I needed to know. Um, I entered the Dallas quilt show and I didn't realize that I wouldn't get notes back on my quilt. So I didn't get information on why it won an honorable mention ribbon. I have no idea. Um, but different shows are completely different. So make sure to read through all those instructions, all those informational pieces. Um, Take the time to read all that because it's going to be important. Yep. And make sure that you do everything it says because if you don't have a label on your quilt, guess what? You're not getting it back. <laughs> They're not going to know it was yours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't ever send your quilt off without a label. <laughs> no. no. Not just any, you can't just write on it with marker. You need to actually put an actual label on it. Hate this directional right what is it called again tone on tone this one tone on tone fabric in the layer cake is so hard to tell white one with the birds and the stars yeah. on it yeah i cannot tell for the life of me which is the right side or not it's weird too because some tone on tones the the fabric feels more plasticky this one feels more um, not plasticky. 
you know, the little yeah, spots this one, on it. It's not yeah. as plasticky filling. It's a little bit more nicer. Maybe that's why Tula's fabric costs more. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for um, Everglow to come out. Like I am so excited for Everglow. I want to buy all the bolts. <laughs> <laughs> all the bolts. Yeah, I've been thinking of biting the bullet and just getting the, you know, getting it by the yard <laughs> instead of fat quarter bundle, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the way to go. I'm telling you. Yeah. Unless you're on a budget. If you're on a budget, fat quarters do amazingly. But if you if you can spare the money and have the disposable income, bolts or excuse me, yardage is really great to have. Does anybody yeah. have finished blocks to show? I have one hanging up behind me and I just finished another one that I'm about to put up there. I have a few. Well, I've been doing mine in chain piecing, so I don't really have a Finished one yet? Yeah. That's but I can show you the one I'm working on is um, a pattern called Flutter. It's very modern. Okay. Yep, modern. Stepping out of my comfort zone and doing a modern quilt. Good for you. From the Fat Quarter book, from the Fat Quarter shop. And it's a pattern for layer cakes, or that. not layer cakes, Fat Quarters. <laughs> and uh, I'm just converted it to a layer cake. And my blocks are these. Right there. Love that. Looking so good, Tiffany. Hold yeah, on, hold on. That's really Just drop, drop the front. There we go. <laughs> they look so cool next to each other because even though some of them have white next to white, it still kind of gives it that look. Um, what size did you cut your strips? Two inches. Very simple. Two inches, side to side. Nice. And then um, okay. from one side only, I just kept cutting three sets of two inches. Strips, what do you think? It, you know, I start the piece with the two inch strip on top and bottom. I mean, side and bottom. And then I move the bigger piece out of the way and cut two inches off the side and bottom of that. And then move the bigger piece out of the way and two inches off the side and bottom of that. And then I took out all the two inch strips of the layer cake itself and replaced them with the colors. With the blue and the pink. Are you going to work on that tomorrow in your? Um... Yeah, probably. If I, yeah, I don't know. Because I don't have anything for tomorrow's video. Well, well, yeah, I don't know. So here's one of the units. <laughs> I have a sew and flip here, and then we'll have another one on the bottom. To create the diamond, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm also using this really pretty. The purple pink, geode. Purple geode mm -hmm. fabric with it. And I wish I had that one. I bought the, the, the blue and the pink because I thought they were more the, the stronger of the colors of the geode ones, you know? Mm-hmm. Should have bought that one. Yeah, I have. I hope I have enough of this, of that one. If I don't, then I'm going to have to. Well, I don't. Them. I don't think I'm going to have enough of my pink. The blue, I will though. The blue, I had like two and a half yards of. The pink, I only had less than a yard. But I'm using it. I shall so, make it work. This pattern calls for all the cornerstones to be the same color, but. You know, it doesn't have to be that. If I don't have enough of that one color, yeah. then I'll dig into the other one. Because I think I have more colors in that geode. Yeah. Fabric, so. You 
still oil a machine if it says do not oil on it? Uh, no, if a machine says do not oil, do not oil it. They say that for a reason. Yeah. It, like not my even bike. in a little bobbin area. Some people try to like do that in their bobbin casing area. Maybe on one of those old brother or uh, Kenmore machines or something with the pop out metal bobbin. Yeah, put a, a drop of oil in there. But these newer machines that are computerized and all that, do not oil them. If it says do not oil, do not oil it. You're going to ruin right. it. That's my Viking. Uh, I have a Viking Topaz 50 and mm. I don't oil that. Yeah. I would yeah. never pay $1,300 for a machine that says do not oil and then throw oil in it because there it goes. It's gone. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. Exactly. Some of the newer machines do have oiling ports, though, that I've saw that the computerized ones, but most of them do not. I have got two of my blocks up behind me. So the way this pattern is broken down, if you look at it, there's four blocks. There's one where the star legs are on the top left and the left, on the top and the left. And I'm then making one... it so they can see the you you in oh. hole, so Hold they can on. see the block. I made it. Spotlight. No, you made it for you. You got to do spotlight for everybody so everybody can see. There you go. Oh. Um, so there are four star blocks, and I'll show you this in a couple of minutes. Remember a while ago, Teresa, you were like, are you going to worry about it being directional? Yeah, actually, I think I am because <laughs> I have figured out how the star blocks lay. So, Did I do it like that? No, you didn't. <laughs> But the star blocks, and I'm going to make two more to show you, and you'll see it in a minute, but you have block one, which has the star legs on the top and the left, and then you have block two with the legs on the left and the bottom. Block three has them on the top and the right, and then block four would have them on the right and on the bottom. So as long as I know what that is as I'm laying them out, I'm going to use my design board to kind of get a visual for this. I'm going to build out two more and I'll show you how it's going to start coming together. But you can see the pattern somewhat right here. I'm liking how that black is making the colors pop. That's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, looks great. Yes, pretty it definitely pretty. looks great. Susan says, it's, this is fun to see y'all using the same layer cake and such different results. I am really excited about this as well. Like I love everybody's blocks are coming out so differently. Yep, but we're all using the same main fabric. It's yeah, I think this is a great example of how you can take the same fabric and do different blocks and get something that looks totally different. It's interesting because yeah. the design piece, the design element of this, when I was looking at the layer cake, I don't need all of the tenant squares for my project. So I was trying to decide which ones do I want to discard? Mm -hmm. Well, not discard. I just put my scrap pile to do something else with. So I automatically decided to pull the black ones out because that's going to be my background and I didn't want to confuse it. And so I thought originally that the color with the, the piece with all the hexagons in it, you know what I'm talking about, with all the colors, the rainbow hexagons, Yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought for sure I was going to have that be the center of the quilt, the center of one of the blocks. So I pulled those out and then I started realizing if I brought that in, when I look at that block, all I see is all the bright color in that fabric and it would take away from the star legs, which I knew I wanted the star legs to be the big pops of color. So I actually ended up not using those 10 inch squares because it had so much color in it. I ended up going more for any fabrics that had a lot of black and white for the middle. Yeah, I pulled out my layer cake. It doesn't show up on camera because my light is washing in a, oh, a little bit there. You can see that this is a Hold tone on. on tone, but it's a white and so I wanted to I wanted to pull this out of my stack because I didn't really I didn't really want this one 
in there. Um, so I, cause I only needed 40, not 42 pieces of the layer cake. And then out of the rainbow pack, I only need 40 out of the 42. So I, I actually forgot about that. And I just now pulled the two out that I'm not going to be using for that. Um, but it's still, I, I'm loving that it's turning a rainbow. We've got a rainbow kind of thing going on. It's the blocks are turning out really, really great. How are your blocks going to lay out, Ian? Um, they're going to be on point. Let me see if I can kind of lay this up. Basically, I, I wish I had like five hands. Five hands would be wonderful. Um, but they're going to be like, diamond to diamond i have the ceiling fan on so they're like blowing around a lot but they're gonna look like this when it's all said and done um and there's gonna it, it, I, it's hard to show this so tune in tomorrow and we'll see if i can start putting the rows together maybe yeah tune into all of our channels sooner or later you'll see these quilts man <laughs> yep. yeah i i'm not sure about using the white on white even in my quilt because i mean you can't there's not a big contrast there you know yeah yeah well we know what we're doing next uh season uh, ahead of time for teresa when the fearless four <laughs> do their next sew along will we know what we're going to be working with uh, I don't think so. Will the fans know? Uh, uh, well, I would hope to let the fans know ahead of time. I don't know. Ian, Lisa is asking if you can pin your quilt blocks to the quilt behind you. I um, could, but I don't want to. I don't really want to at the moment. Um, I have I have design or a design wall fabric um, that I could put up and I may put that up for tomorrow's video tomorrow's live I mean um, but for tonight I'm just going to leave it as is I get it yeah tonight's just putting the blocks together we'll see if I can actually maybe start assembly tomorrow that'd be fun yeah, how big your quote uh, do you all know how big your quilts will be? They do. They have patterns. They're working with patterns. Well, no, I'm working with Off a pattern it. as an inspiration, but I've modified it to do my own thing. I, yeah. When I'm making a tutorial video, I will follow the tutorial to a T. But what you don't know about me is when I'm sewing on my own, a pattern is just a suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do my own thing like this is supposed to be all half square triangle units and i was like no i'm gonna do flying geese instead <laughs> yeah that's me too i don't know i think it'll be uh a lap anywhere between a lap and a queen but i don't know for sure because i because i'm using a layer cake and not the fat quarters that it says to use the sizes are going to be different so yeah According and I didn't, take, I didn't take the time to do the math for you. <laughs> Mine will be like 64 by the next number down. We'll see. By 72, because it's just going to be the same as a layer cake would make. 10, I mean, seven, six across by seven down. That's what I was looking for word wise. Sorry. <laughs> According to the pattern, if I don't add borders to this, it will measure 60 inches by 60 inches, but I know I'm going to put borders on it. So Me too. I, I think it's going to be, I think I may even set the borders up so that it's bigger at the top and bottom than it is on the sides to give it more of a longer look instead of just being square. Water. No, I did not make my ironing board that I'm using. I bought that at a quilt shop a few years ago, but my friend resurfaced it for me with some fabric I had. She did a wonderful job. She did. Hey. So far, this is the extra half square triangles I have. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah. I'm actually taking the half square to triangles that I'm cutting off of one of my pieces and I'm turning them. Yeah, that, that's the dream. I'm sewing them together and then maybe I might use them if I have enough of them. I might use them in the final product. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I haven't decided. We'll see how far it all gets me. Yeah, if I have enough, I might use it in the border. That's not yours. No, where is it? Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. I don't, I looked at my pattern to see how big it finishes, but I, a quick glance of the pattern, I couldn't, I didn't find it. So we'll see. You um, will find out along with me. <laughs> Lady Fair, we, we are all using the same fabric. Um, it's um, line work by Tula Pink. Scott will put in a link. I'll be right back. Okay. I need to go to the laboratory. Bio break. Then I will be next. <laughs> Ian. I was thinking I needed a peanut break. <laughs> a peanut break. Somebody mentioned a while ago um, that their local quilt shop is getting Everglow in next week, which is good because I am definitely going to be ordering from my favorite quilt store and I'm going to be ordering the um, quilt kit for it. One of the quilt kits. Oh, awesome. Oh, I like that black and orange. That looks really good. Um, are you pre-ordering that? Did you pre-order that? Um, they do not, the quilt store, I use crimsontate.com um, a lot of times because they're a small business that I, I enjoy supporting small businesses. Um, I am waiting for them. They haven't, they didn't do pre-orders. So I'm waiting for them to update their website and uh, put the order on. Don't forget to get up and stretch. Oh. Yeah. Move around. 50 years I, old. Oh, I can stretch and okay. kick and stretch. <laughs> I'm Sally O'Malley, 50 years old. Come on, somebody <laughs> knows that. You're funny. Oh, well. Funny haha -ha or funny ho ho? I'll be right back. <laughs> funny haha. -ha. <laughs> All right. Anybody wanted to see how I'm cutting my squares since I'm the only one here making junk up as I go. Let hey, me make that's this. not true. I'm making some of it up as I go. <laughs> Where is it? Where's the app? Pin myself. I forgot how to do this again. No, it's spotlight for everyone, not pin. Oh. So hover over your uh, video card and click on uh -huh. the three dots in the upper right hand corner and then choose spotlight for everyone. Spotlight for everyone. Continue. All right. Here we go. This is how my fabric is being cut. And you're looking at it from the, a weird angle because I only have my laptop today. So anyway, starting on Other my left-hand side, I'm, just gonna leave them. I'm cutting a two-inch strip. Right? Uh -huh. Then I'm going to leave that there and go to the bottom and cut a guess what? Two inch strip all the way across. Don't move anything. Don't adjust anything. Do not adjust your TVs. And then slide those out of the way. Now that big square again, do the same thing from your um, left hand side, cut a two inch strip. Go to the bottom, cut a two inch strip. This is very simple. Be nice if I could cut. <laughs> Look at that. Somehow I missed that whole entire piece. Right? Where did it go? 
Make I've been it. doing that recently. I'm like, how am I making that happen? That's my cutting board. I cut too much right here in this section. Oh. Now move those out of the way. That next big piece, do it again. Two inches from your left. Two inches from the bottom. And then take away all of your two inch squares and replace them with two inch squares of your accent color. Five, six, and I'm doing mine in stacks of six. Two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm putting my pink in the middle. Two, three, so forth. Five and six. And then I'm moving them around. So I'm starting with this bottom one. I'm just going to put that top one on the bottom. Leave that middle one because I kind of want to have the two darks. It's up to you which order you shift them in. So I'm going to take the top three and put those on the bottom on both of these, just like this. And then this last one take all the way to that and then put that on the top and now you can see once they go back together again i don't have the purple oops yeah the purple is in the geode one it's a bluish purple and then they go back together like this so you attach these two together these two together and then the four and then you attach this to it, but I always start from the bottom because it's going to hang over. It's bigger by half an inch. And then attach these two together and then attach it at the seam first, sewing from the top side right here at the color, always sewing at the color side. And then this one is going to be even more oversized. It's going to stick over almost an inch. And then you sew these and then put them on. It's quite simple. It's like a log cabin kind of. There we go. All right. Now to get yourself off of the spotlight in the upper, if you hover over your video in the upper left-hand corner, there's a spotlight that'll put it back to the four of us when you're ready. There we go. You got it. Look Yay. <laughs> Look, another block just magically appeared on my wall. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Where did Becca get that? She bought it a, a thing. Right, Becca, you bought it your ironing thing. You just she just yep. said it like two seconds ago. Yep, yeah. I bought it from the old country store in Lancaster, Virginia. And after the fabric that was on it got all used up and fun and yucky, my friend Mary resurfaced it for me. And it's probably gonna be uh time soon to um resurface it i'm being asked what size is the block the block is going to square up to tell you in a minute It doesn't say what size the block will square up to. So I couldn't tell you. Okay, so I'll measure one after I put this one together. Okay. And Teresa, one of the questions was for you about having any blocks done. If so, can you hold it up? I don't have any blocks done. Show us what you got. I'm sewing the, doing the sewing flips on the corners of each piece. That's a lot of work. And um, I've been chain piecing, but basically the quilt should look something like this. 
maybe not quite that colorful, but so it's not really, um, you don't really put the blocks together, you know, you put the, I'm going to have to hang it up on my design wall and kind of figure out where each one of these pieces will be in the quilt and then take them down and sew them together. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. What was the other question now? The pieces in the little quilt behind me were one and a half inches. The the half square triangles are one and a half inches were, but they're not anymore. They're one inch finished. And then the four patches were little one inch squares. So four of them together make a one and a half inch square. One put together into one piece, it becomes a one inch square. And those, that quilt won you a ribbon. Yep. Mm -hmm. It won the ribbon that's hanging next to my head. Look, I have a bow on my head. It's beautiful. <laughs> Yep. Well, technically it won me a machine too, but I traded the machine and here's one of the things I traded for. It the other ones won are three machines. TBD. TBD. Yeah. They're not here. They're not here. So I can't tell anybody what I got because it's a secret. I know what you got. Well, I'll the three tell. of you know. <laughs> I'll never tell. And what iron are you guys using? Becca's using the same iron as me. Yep. Except mine's Frankenstein together. <laughs> I've actually upgraded to two cordless irons in my studio. Mary got this, the newer model cordless iron for her birthday. And she had the older model in her room. Uh -huh. And so my Aliso that I had was starting to not get as hot as it needed to be. It's just several years old and it needs, it needed to be replaced. And I was waiting and hem and hawing and not, not upgrading it. Well, she offered me her old cordless iron. And I said, yes, please. <laughs> so I have two cordless irons in my room and I'm a happy camper. One for each station that you're at, huh? Yep. One. Well, I have one on my ironing board. That's where it sits. And then I keep this one here. And then I do have the small mini Aliso iron that I keep handy for, um, the other sewing station if somebody wants their own personal iron. Usually whoever's in my space with me, they just get up and walk over to the ironing board though. That's what I would do. I, was over I, was doing. Doing. I would do it normally too, but so much of my sewing is done on camera. I don't like getting up and going to the other side of the room while I've got a live stream going. Yeah. I don't mind showing my butt. <laughs> oh, I know. We but, like looking at your butt too. <laughs> you could always you could always get, get yourself an Iron Man too, Becca. Well, I have one, but he does not like to iron. <laughs> I need to send him down to your place to take lessons from Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right now Scott's not Iron Man because I'm trying to keep all this in order, but I already got one set out of order and I had to rip it. I My feel... little girl, no, that's not paper pieced. I, I pieced it. Uh, I pieced traditional. it. Right, traditional piecing. Sorry, the word wasn't there. Words are hard. Yeah. Tell me about uh, it. Trish has an interesting question. She said, she said okay, everybody. What quilting skills should a confident beginner have? This is like the fallback skill level. And then you need to know paper piecing and applique. So what would you say, what, what would you say somebody has to have down if they wanted to classify themselves as a confident beginner? Um, nesting seams needs to be 100% down. No, it's fine. I don't know. Quarter inch. Yeah, that definitely needs to be something. Quarter of an inch nested seams. Heard those two. And I would say knowing how to cut your fabric. 
As if you don't cut your fabric right, that's where it all starts. <laughs> yep. Oh, for sure. Good piecer. Especially if you're going to follow a pattern, you know. I'd also, yeah, I think you, I think that kind of covered it. Like the quarter inch and would encompass being able to sew straight, right? Right. The, the cutting correctly would encompass being able to read the ruler, handling your rotary cutter or your scissors or yeah, your templates or whatever the case that might be. Being able to read and understand pattern directions. Yeah. I, I think that. Well, that doesn't make me, uh, I must still be under confident beginner because I can't read, <laughs> I can't read and understand direction. <laughs> I, I think there's, I, I, you're, I mean, well, that's not be. true. No, no, that's not true. Tiffany's sitting here saying, I can't read a pattern. I can't understand it. But then she just did an amazing quilt, right? King size quilt from a pattern. She right. can. Is it comfortable for her? No. no. Does she prefer <laughs> to work from a pattern? No. Can she yeah. read it and know what they're talking about? Yes. There's a difference. Yeah, that's, yes. It's not gibberish to you. You can figure out what they're saying. And oftentimes you can find out a better way of doing it. <laughs> Pretty much. But I definitely, uh, not a follower patterner kind of person. And that's okay. You guys all find each other. YouTube is how we all found each other. I met Becca at pretty much at the beginning of her journey on YouTube and and Teresa I've known forever because she used to come on my channel and when I you know in the nights <laughs> when I'd come on all my random days and then mm -hmm. Ian I met through Becca yeah actually that I met Teresa because I started a channel and she was watching the videos way in the beginning and I mm -hmm. mentioned I wanted to I started talking to her because I mentioned I had a quilt I wanted to send out to long arm she's like well you know I'm a long armor don't you and I went oh yeah <laughs> okay and so she quilted that for me and then i met Teresa because or tiffany because this other lady that Teresa, not Teresa louise but Teresa mcbrayer was telling me about how tiffany had a channel and she, i needed to check her out and so i eventually did and i watched her for a little while i, I tried to but it was hard for me to watch because i could never see her i could hear her but i couldn't see anything that she was doing and i was just like okay <laughs> but I, I did try to tune in and watch like the live streams and stuff because she didn't use to edit videos it was always live streams for her yep. and then um ian i i met well i i was introduced to ian's channel the first time i did an ambassadorship for the puzzle mystery quilt because cotton cuts asked him to do one too mm -hmm. and so i went over and stalked his channel a little bit and we never really like we didn't really talk we never met each other. I think I left like one comment on his video on one of his videos one time, but then I was in a zoom call for cotton cuts and Ian just popped into the room I was in and I about died. I was like, <gasps> I remember that. I remember that. I had a fangirl they, uh, for sure. They want to know if we physically met in person. Well, I have met Becca, obviously. And I have met Ian, obviously. The only person I haven't met in person is Teresa Louise, but we talk on the video chat all the time. So it's like meeting in person. <laughs> we need to, I need to talk to Teresa more on video chat. Hey, Donna's here. Donna, and technically, welcome. in person, you guys are going to see me, uh, Becca, or you're going to try to do live stream while we're in Vegas, right? Yeah, we're going to do a live stream that Friday night. I don't know. I don't know That's where the 21st, be from. right? Yep. yep. Yeah. So the 21st. 21st guys, I will be in Vegas and I haven't even, we haven't set up like a meet and greet thing yet. So stay tuned. You got to keep track on that community tab on my page to be able to meet me. And if you're on the West coast and you want to come to Vegas, we'll be there the 21st and Becca will be there obviously too. So it'll we'll, likely be, so I and know so will Eric. So I know on Saturday, we're going to do a shop hop and dinner. And if anybody wants to go to dinner with us, totally you cool mean for friday 
Friday, Friday. Yeah. yeah. Saturday, I'm getting on a plane and coming home. Friday, my thought is we'll wake up. Tiffany, Eric, and I will ha do have some time together. We'll hang out. And because uh, Tiffany's coming in Thursday night. So we'll hang out Thursday night. We'll get up, get ready, get moving Friday, maybe do a couple of fun things. But part of what Friday is going to be is a quilt shop hop. I know there's at least two quilt shops I want to go to. Quiltique is one of them. And then, so yeah, their new store, because I've not seen it. I want to see that. I think I'm going to line it up so that I'm going to, so we, we are going to, so yeah, second or last on our trip, because I want to end the day with, so yeah, the live stream that I normally do on Friday is 8 PM my time, but 5 PM Vegas time. So I don't know if we're going, I don't know how that's going to work out because I want to be able to do the live stream. But I also want to be able to enjoy the shopping and go out to dinner with anybody that might want to go out to dinner with us. So my thought is, and I, my thought is I will do a live stream for one hour from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. on that Friday. And then I'll end and I'll go out to eat with Tiffany, eat, um, Eric, and anybody else that might be in. I heard you almost there say that I was going to be there. I did. I did. I mean. Yeah, the 21st of yes. this month, April. Yes. So these are the four different blocks. If you want to take a look, I'll spotlight myself so you can see it. Oh, bigger. those are pretty. Right? Yeah. Now my butt's in the way and you can't, you just like my butt. <laughs> <laughs> work it, work it. Work this it, is work what it. you're doing, oh, right? Wow. Very pretty. So this is block one. You have the star legs on the top and then the left. Block two, you have them on the left and the bottom. Block three, you have them on the top and the right. And block four, you have them. Uh oh, this is wrong. Hold on. I knew something looked off. There, this is better. Block four, you have them on the right and on the bottom. And so, because I know how the, oh, that does look so much better now. Because I know how they're all kind of going to go together, it can give me the opportunity to make the squares in here directional. So, um, gosh, I wish I could bring you in even closer, but even just seeing it from this distance back you can really start to see how much impact those solids really have, right? Yeah. You've got a black background. You've got kind of like this muted art going on for the center of the square. But then these bright pops of solid color are just going to be everything. So um, the way the pattern has this laid out is you're going to do five across and five down. I don't know if I'm going to do five across or if I'm going to take it out to six. We'll see. I might do a few. I might do six by six if I can get away with it. I don't know if I have enough squares for that, but that's what you got. I like it. It looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's really Quite pretty. Please. Even the I'm one like in the lower <laughs> left corner right here those star legs are kind of like a, a bright neon green. Mm -hmm. And I, when I was putting those legs onto that Panda fabric, I literally was like, I don't know if I like it with this, but once it's in the quilt, I just like how, how much that color punches you in the face. Well, I like that the light blue, the darker bluish purple, and then the like those colors really work well together and they, they reflect off of each other very well. And there are some other colors that I'm going to be using. I'm going to use the green and I'm going to use a, per, a red. And I think I already have the, yeah, I already have the purple up there. What you don't see represented is the green and the red yet. So I've got two other colors that I'm going to work into there. So there's six solid colors. I was counting as I was cutting and getting the fabric laid out. I might need to add in a couple other colors, but these are all colors from um, what is the solid line that went alongside line work? It wasn't Dragon's Breath and Unicorn Poop. It was the other one, right? Fairy Flakes? No, no, no it was a solid. Anyway, whatever, it w I don't remember what the name of it is, but these are Tula's colors. So I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm giving myself a little bit of grace here. These are colors that Tula says, these are my colors. So I am going to take that to mean Tula says these colors work with her fabric. Right. I'm just Absolutely. taking the they ones do. that I like the most. Yeah. 
I think they absolutely work with yeah. what you're doing. I think they look really, really good. I'm so proud of you for branching out and starting to embrace Tula. You know, it's so funny because I, for so long, was like, no, no. And I, th I, I do love the line work line. Like, I, I really do love that line. And it was even hard because I had to cut the 10 inch squares down for the pattern to make the center of that square because that's not a 10 inch square with legs on it. It's a different size. I'm not going to tell you the size because then I would be giving away the pattern and that's not fair. Yes. You got to buy the pattern. Um, but when I was cutting those down, I was, tr I was, I was trying to pay attention to the design elements that were on there. If it was just an all over toss, I just cut it. But some of them Perfect. had a really like the skunk, the right. Yeah. Or the, um, or the, uh, the lemurs. I wanted to be able to showcase that. So I didn't necessarily do fussy cussing, fussy cutting entirely because I, I couldn't get mm -hmm. exactly where I wanted, but I did try to make sure that where possible, the full design element is in the center of the block. Yeah. Yep. Uh, someone asked, uh, where did it go? Constance asked, did you say unicorn poop? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Its Dragon's name is breath and unicorn poop. Uh huh. Yep. I was just explaining that to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Out the unicorn poop. I would say that the names of Tula's lines are a little bit out there because she's a yep. little bit out there. <laughs> I like. I like it. I just, you know, it's it's something where I feel like your skill, your taste ebbs and flows. When I first started quilting. I would never have bought anything with color in it. My go-to if I wanted color was like pastels. That was it. I was going to get pastels. And usually I wouldn't even do that. If I was going to make something for the house, it was always like earth tones, like dusty browns and dusty reds, like very unsaturated colors, like really dark. And then I discovered like Lala Boutique, and Bonnie and Camille, and um, I want like sharing a few other Moda designers that did some pinks and some aquas and some greens. I was like, ooh, I like those colors. And I still, I still love those colors. But now I'm taking, I'm embracing taking those colors to an even more bright in your face. I am starting to find that I'm drawn to Allison Glass's palette, uh, Tula Pink's palette, because the colors, are just like, they're so much more vibrant. And I really like that. I remember just using solids only, like just, uh, I'd get a layer cake. It didn't matter what it was or a jelly roll. Didn't matter what it was. I'd take a white fabric, blend it with it, throw it together. I'd take a purple fabric, blend it with it, go together. That's how I made quilts. Until I discovered Becca's scrap piles that she sends me. <laughs> then I discovered all the different fabric lines there are. <laughs> I love it when I get to send you a scrap bag or a de-stash box because I can put designer fabric in there that I know you probably don't have unless somebody else sent it to you. Yeah. And there's, I don't know, the, the fabric's good quality and sometimes it's really pretty and I like to see what you make out of that. We love it too, Becca. <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 it's actually the bank loves it too back at <laughs> i could never afford tula on my own i'm glad people send it to me this one i actually purchased on my own though because yeah <laughs> i was like why not i'm gonna do it so i did It was on sale at Quilcon, so had to. I couldn't walk away empty handed. I haven't gotten into CAFE yet, though, and I don't know if I will. I like it. I, I don't know. It's still too busy. But this is one thing that I will say I don't feel like we can ever say, I hate it, I will never use it because I think your tastes change, right? You just want a palate cleanser. 
I don't know if anybody else is like this, but usually when I work with a fabric line or I make a quilt, if I'm using a fabric line, I get, by the time I'm done with that quilt, I'm kind of done with that fabric. I don't want to look at it anymore. And that's why a lot of times I'll save, I save all the scraps for the quilt as I'm working on it, because I never know if I'm going to need it, if I make a mistake or at the beginning, when I'm starting the quilt, I love it and I want to keep all of it. But by the time I get to the end of the quilt, I ask myself whether or not I really want to work with those scraps or not. And if I don't, then I pay them forward to somebody else that can get some enjoyment out of it. Teresa got, I think she got my most recent scrap package. I went through the Christmas morning fat quarter bundle from Lella Boutique from last year. (laughs) And I picked out the fat quarters I knew I was going to use. And the rest of them from that fat quarter bundle, I sent to Teresa and oh my goodness, you guys, there's so much fabric in a fat quarter bundle. There was enough for me to make my quilt and to have a good amount of scraps and send enough to Teresa to make a whole nother quilt or two. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't figure out why I was talking and nobody was acknowledging that I was talking and I was like, what's going on? And then I realized, oh, my microphone died. So hello, I'm back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Hello. I see. Oh, look at her. Back. She's fondling her fabric oh, over wait. there. Hold on, though. Hold on, though, because Teresa, something came. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Did you just throw it? No, it fell on my head. Oh. oh, look what I got. Christmas is that a Christmas Eve? Eve? Yes, it is. Do they have a Christmas morning and a Christmas Eve, that same lady from that same line? Yeah. Christmas morning was last year. Christmas Eve is this year. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So I think you sent me a little tiny bundle of it because I think I you used it. You need to yeah. send me an invoice. It was like a six-piece <laughs> bundle and I used it. Or just, just tell me. I'll, no, I'll, we'll send you an invoice. Just uh, message me your PayPal address and we'll get it We'll get it over to you. And then Mary, Mary does all of my shipping for me. So she'll ship it out this week for you. Wow. You have an assistant? Unless it's like a baby. Well, Mary is a very good friend. You know what? I don't even know how to say it. And I don't want to sound lower than what it is. But Mary is a very good friend. And she does help me with some of the logistics stuff, like getting packages in the mail. Because I am slow when it comes to mailing stuff. Oh, me too. I hear you. I have Scott for that. I know. Well. I would love to have my husband for that, but he does so much for me already. I don't want to ask him to do one more thing. Yeah. Okay. I went ahead and put one of these kind of together so you could kind of see what it's going to look like. Here, I'll make you big so everybody can see. Keep it hold out. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, I like it. I like it. So it'll have the purple another purple block up here and two more squares up here i see you see modern 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 yeah this this quilt is going to have a lot of room for some awesome quilting can't wait to yeah, see it looks like it yeah. oh dude so, what i don't i don't have it handy but you're going to have to watch the vlog on Tuesday because I got some quilting done. Do da, do da. And I'm so proud of myself. Embracing the project and just getting it done. And it actually doesn't look horrible. It looks really good. Yeah. Ian and Ian's seen it, so he knows what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. The only bad fabric, it's the only bad, th- I had to use one of the pieces of the white to make sure that it, there was enough for this pattern. And the white, the white tone on tone is so hard to tell which side is right, which side is which. It's part of the reason I don't like working with tone on tones because I never know what side is the right side. It's yeah. so hard mm-hmm. to tell. 
once you've got all the fabric starched and yeah, you're uh, it, it'll be done in two seconds. Oh my gosh, my allergies are so bad right now. Would you like <clears throat> an allergy pill? I have them right here. I, I took one this morning. I take allergy pills in the morning and I take um, allergy drops every day. <laughs> Donna said, Talik too, your block is stunning. All right, guys, I'm going to call it and say we have 10 minute warning to be done. Oh my gosh, it's. Okay, Almost I'll have my whole block. coil done in 10 minutes. We <laughs> oh, have been sewing too long, and this to be needs to get up, move around, and not sit in this chair anymore. Yeah, we've been I need dinner. I didn't realize what time it was. Yeah, plus I need to eat. So. I should spend well, my husband. I put dinner in the crock pot. <laughs> Smart. I not know. Me. I'll throw it in the microwave, though. <laughs> no, Teresa, I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Jody says it looks as though you all are using the same rotary blade. Is everybody using a Martelli? Yes. Yep. Ah! <laughs> Not Teresa. Oh, Ian's using his wrote his Martelli. Teresa, yep. says you're not using the Martelli. Oh, but you I have, one. have one now. You do have one. Yeah. And it's all your fault, Becca, that I'm using. You're welcome. It. You're welcome. Because <laughs> I I used so I have used the Martelli cutter in the past like a couple of times my friends had one and i used it i'm like oh this feels weird i don't like it and so i don't <laughs> use it and then i was at your house uh last year becca and started using it there and i'm like oh my gosh this is really nice i like it and now i've used one ever since i like how you're like Ew, Jackie, i don't like it i don't like it <laughs> i don't like it <laughs> it, it takes a little getting used to <laughs> it does but once you start using it i i'm yeah that's it I'm i tried using it a little bit today and i was standing up using it here and i just kept bearing off away from the ruler and i was like ah this is not working oh um, cat boo said Miss T, oh, sorry, Teresa, keep going. I'm sorry. No, that's that's all right. I I love getting interrupted. <laughs> no, that it wasn't kind. I was just reading and wasn't even paying attention. Sorry. I'm just kidding, Becca. <laughs> wasn't nice. Um, but uh, it is easier for me to use the Martelli when I'm sitting down. Me too. Yep. Hundred percent. I've yeah. heard people say it's hard. Uh, I this I've heard, uh, I've heard, I've heard this said before, <laughs> and the exact words were, "I can't get, cut sitting down. I don't know how people do it. Some people do like those. It was something like that. I don't maybe not exactly, but it was. I don't know how people cut sitting down. I can't cut sitting down, and I'm just, I. I don't know. It kind of, it kind of felt like a dig <laughs> because that's all I do is cut sitting down. But I will say it's because of this. I cut occasionally standing up, but if I'm using the stick cutter, I can't cut sitting down easily, but with this, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I seem to cut better standing up so using do I. this one, but um, go ahead, Tiffany. Oh, I was just saying I cut better standing, honestly. I know. It felt like a dig, Tiffany. No, I'm kidding. Even with the Marcelli cutter, it, it doesn't I, bother me. It doesn't put that weird strain that some people say. I, I think if I used it more, then I would start getting used to standing up and using it to cut with, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah but, um, I just keep going back to my old cutter. I will say, I I think for me, the cutting sitting down piece is just because I have done it so much that that's what I'm used to. And I think it's the same thing with like your rotary cutter, right, Teresa? Like you've got, you're using that other one, right? The, the stick cutter, that's what you're used to. That's what your mind works on. It doesn't mean that that is 
the best rotary cutter for everyone. It also doesn't mean that the Martelli is the one that everybody should use. You need mm -hmm. to use the tools that work for you and you need to work the way your body needs you to work. Absolutely. Right? Body needs you to sit, maybe you're wheelchair bound and you can't stand, then you've got to do what you've got to do. Exactly. Which I've learned how to do that, right. to adapt to it. Yeah, exactly. I, I actually like having a different station for pressing and, and cutting. Um, and the table's a little bit taller, uh -huh. and so I will cut standing up. Yeah, but that gets me away good. from the sewing yep. area, mm -hmm. you know, gets me up. So I like yep. to be up yep. for a while and then back down here for a while. Yep. I used to I have I used to have no ironing board set up in my studio. It would be, I would just use a mat and I would even press entire quilts on that wool mat, the small 17 by 24 one. That's what I did. I was like, nope, I'm going to do everything sitting down. I don't want to get up and move around. But over the past year, I was like, you know, I have space for an ironing board. I just got to find where I'm going to put it. So I actually got a really nice ironing board and a nice big custom cut wool mat to put on top of it. And I leave it set up in my studio. It's out of the way. It doesn't bother anybody. It's in no, it's in no one's way. And I get up and I'll walk over to it and I use it. In the Martelli table, I try, it's a, it's a struggle. I try to keep that cleaned off so that I have a nice cutting surface for when I need to cut stuff off of the bolt or when I need to square mm -hmm. up a quilt. Most of my cutting when I'm doing blocks is kind of right here. Right. But I have the option to get up and do that. And it's like you said, going to different work areas to work, it switches it up. It makes it nicer. Yeah, definitely. So I can't wait to see everybody's finished pro projects. I know, me too. I'm really excited. So if you guys want to see these finished projects, you're going to have to go come back and watch uh, Teresa Louise, I Quilt Too, and So Becca, and Tiffany's Quilting Live, and the uh, Quilter uh, Crafter uh, Ian. Yes. Yep. That one. That one. Um, I've made 18 blocks, my friends. That's what I got so far. Well, that means I have a lot more to make. Someone in the chat asked um, if we had active Facebook pages. I do not have, I mean, I have a Facebook page, but I don't really update it all that much. I prefer Instagram. So I have an Instagram off Kilter Crafter Ian on Instagram is where I post a lot of my in-between stuff. What about Teresa? And Teresa, you have a Facebook uh, group, right? I do. I um, it's I quilt too with Teresa Louise, and um, you can go over to my channel, and the link is in the description box of the video on her channel. Over on the channel. Mm -hmm. And Becca, there are a couple of questions to answer, but yes, I have a website. I have an Instagram. I have a Facebook page. I have a Facebook group. I have all of the things and they're all maintained and updated. Yeah. Oh, I have an Instagram now too. Yay! Oh, you started. Yay. In fact, I follow all of you. Well, I haven't been okay. on my Instagram. I posted like three days ago. That's yeah, it. <laughs> I saw that. Um, is Beetlejuice on Instagram? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's puppy dot Beetlejuice. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I am not going to let my Instagram be overrun by my dogs. So I set up another account. <laughs> well, I follow Beetlejuice. Good. He loves you, you for that. Laughing. I'm going to have to look it up later back at the show. <laughs> I don't post there often, but it's 100% puppy content when I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, right, I, I was pretty sure it was yours because I recognized him, but. <laughs> you know, Tiffany, you should start one for Thumper. I oh, probably yeah. could. There would be a ton of followers, probably more than I have on my own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to let everybody go. Thank you for hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe to Miss Sobeka.
and to Miss Teresa Louise I Quilt too, and to Ian, the off kilter crafter Ian. And you guys will be able to keep up with all the projects that, that this continuous project, all the updates that they have on it. And don't forget, Teresa goes live tomorrow, Ian goes live tomorrow, and I go live tomorrow. And for those of you that are going to miss us, happy Easter. And we'll see you guys in our next videos. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. And yes, Lori, I love batiks. <laughs>